All right. Welcome to Ecom. I don't know which number it is. <laughs> I don't know either. Who knows which <laughs> when this will come out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All we know is that this is a. Uh, it's going to be a debate on whether or not uh, the Amazing Spider-Man Two is better or worse than Captain America: The Winter Soldier. Um, since I'm like you know. Uh, I, I kind of started this whole thing. We I planned this discussion with uh, uh, the Madcap. Uh, we'll start with uh, Madcap. Which one would you say is better? I think upon rewatch, I can definitely conclude Winter Soldier is a better movie than Amazing Spider-Man 2. I mean, there's uh, so much history on my part of where I came uh, between both movies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Marcus, your turn. Uh, I think The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is easily better. I actually think The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is a good film, though, you know, that's, um, <gasps> that's a hot take, yeah. Uh, <laughs> familiar, uh, so... We're familiar with those, me and you, SK. Um, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think The Winter Soldier uh, isn't uh, all that great. Um, uh, I'm I not know, aware of most day. of its issues. <laughs> um I'm not, aware of most, I'm not aware of most of its issues because I need to rewatch SK's video. I'm mostly here simply for a TASM2 references because, you know, I'm the. Uh, I know quite a bit about TASM2 having watched it a gazillion times in the past year. So. <laughs> um, and this will be a little bit interesting because uh, I'm still of the position that Amazing Spider Man 2, it's pretty bad. Uh, it doesn't hold up. However, The Winter Soldier, it's like. It, that one's easily worse, and I, I can say with full confidence that uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 is significantly better, even if it is bad. Um, yeah, that is a, that is a pretty interesting take. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm no stranger. I've seen the video as well, and uh, I am willing to acknowledge there are issues, not just in terms of, like, plot armor beats or bad choreography i did pick up on a rewatch but uh your video does highlight some uh logical issues that i i didn't really see with winter soldier even though i still stand firm that i can enjoy winter soldier much more the amazing spider-man 2. Mm -hmm. that's fair enough Alrighty, yeah that's fair um so i guess if we want to start off uh uh madcap what would you say uh where, where would you want to start with the amazing spider-man 2 i guess well where do we begin um so <laughs> i've seen the amazing spider-man before in the theater um i was interested to see this new take that sony was going to do with the reboot um and i saw in the theater when it first came out and i was i left the theater pretty disappointed i didn't really think it was his yeah, I, I didn't think it's that good. Um, and I can say the Raimi film with the 2002 movie was handled the origin a lot better. Mm -hmm. So with this new movie, with Amazing Spider-Man 2, um, it kind of goes uh, in a long history with this movie because um, there's a funny story, just to get off the track. Um, before the movie had come out, I was doing one of those consumer service surveys where you know the kind of survey offices you guys go to where you ha have to like answer a bunch of questions or watch trailers or try or like do like some questionnaire to get a little bit of money out of are you guys familiar with that uh yeah not entirely but i think i know what you're talking about okay there was one office like that in my local mall and i stopped by and they were trying to get my uh impressions on the, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 trailer and the whole process involved like just watching the trailer over and over and over again to the point where I'm just kind of numb watching this trailer um, and I I have pretty trepidatious thoughts about the movie um, and by the time the movie came out uh, I was in the middle of getting like a school paper done for college and it was a grueling experience uh because i was going through uh some writer's block trying to uh get this paper done for college and it was like my final year final semester mm -hmm. and so okay i need to just like get away from my desk just uh go out and watch a movie and so i hit up a friend of mine and i paid for both of our tickets to see the amazing spider-man 2 
And I was so shell shocked and just just how the movie turned out. I left pretty angry um, at the Amazing Spider-Man two. I I couldn't really find out what what movie that I just watched. Um, and uh, I've seen it a couple of times on home video, and it's it like the viewing experience was a lot better than watching in the theater. And I, I did kind of grow um, soft on it because I think there are some good things about The Amazing Spider-Man 2 that I can admire on a visual standpoint as well as what they try to do with um, a more quippier, um, energetic Peter Parker. But, I mean, since we're not getting The Amazing Spider-Man 3 um, when it was announced, and I saw the film again, and um, I, can arg- I can definitely s- conclude that the movie's pretty bad. Um, and I kind of lost track, uh, where I want to go next from here, but, um, uh, you can start with like, you know, what's the initial criticism you want to open up with? Well, the initial criticism I have is just like, it just, I, I had like Iron Man two, I had like Iron Man two visions again. It's cause you know, the movie's just like, it's what everyone has said already. It's it's very convoluted. There's too many subplots, too many characters. It's hold up, hold up, hold up. Sp- what do you mean by uh, too convoluted with too many subplots? Uh, because well, I, mean, I there's can a definitely... Lot of sub- okay, uh, just uh, finish your thought. Well, I mean, there's so many uh, characters and new characters that they try to cram in. And Such as? Want to... I mean... Where do we begin? Uh, like just uh, Electro's thrown in there, and of course he's the advertised villain. But then Harry Osborne comes in like thirty minutes late into the movie, and he's supposed to be like a big deal to Peter's life. Yeah, and he is. They used to be this... best friends until he left. But the point is, uh, Electro and Harry—they're both uh, the two main villains. Though I'd say Harry is the main villain. But uh, how uh, Electro relates to the plot correlates directly with the main uh, story that's being told, especially because he is part of um, of Harry's plan by the end, uh, when he needs Electro's help to get into the building. So that's how they uh, get you know Electro's subplot and join it with Harry's uh, plan, uh, and then you know it becomes the main plot of the film. How those two characters. Uh, are invading Oscorp and how they end up fighting Peter. Uh, I don't before, um, don't know if I'd say that uh, Electro is just thrown in there. He really clearly uh, is a big part of the main plot. No, and no. Before I, we I, proceed, I, I just want to mention... The movie in mention, other territories was um, called The Rise of Electro, so Electro is a big part of the whole... Yeah, sure, I want to... No, sure, but I, I don't think marketing is really fair to judge the film by. I don't really care about the marketing. We're talking about the film itself. Well, I, I'd like to mention this real quick. So with Oscorp, uh, it seems what the, um, what the film is going for is that the overarching problem in the story is the way that Oscorp mistreats people, abuses people, mm-hmm. um, and tries to, you know, corrupt the world around them, um, but give off the image that they're trying to help people. Um, and it seems like uh, the whole story with Electro and Harry seems to be interlinked with that. So um, I would argue it's the opposite of convoluted. I think these tie together uh, pretty neatly. Yeah, uh, I do want to. It's not convoluted I do, because I do want to ask you two... more though, uh, because you said there are a few characters. Uh, you just said uh, Harry and Max. Is there any other character that you think is just shoved in or something like that? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, they want. They want to give Aunt May. Uh, they introduce Aunt May's like subplot where she's working multiple jobs trying to keep the house full. Like I kind of yeah. wish we kind of got more development onto the onto their struggles. Um, and also, you got like why... uh... wait, hold on. Do you think it's necessary to get more development? I think just to understand where Peter and May are coming from in the situation, I think it's important to see where well, they're but, at financially. Because well, but we know clear. we know they're struggling. That's why she takes a second job, and then we have for uh, expositing that to Peter in a way that Peter didn't wasn't really aware of because uh, she was keeping it from him. I mean, I don't think it needs anything more than that. Functionally, uh, it's fine. Well, okay. Well, what I'm getting to is is that. You know, clearly there's a big issue with money when, um, and we're kind of jumping all over the place, but I have to just to reinforce my points. Uh, there's a clear um, issue with money thrown in into this movie where Harry is dying of, you know, the genetic illness mm-hmm. and he's willing to pay Spider Man, therefore Peter Parker, money to uh, get a sample of Spider Man's blood. 
And that, I think that's something I would definitely say that Peter would be open for that, considering where what? Ed May is at, where they're no. both at financially. He would not. Peter would not risk uh, his friend's life without doing any sort of uh, test on his blood and everything simply for money. That's completely out of character for Peter. I mean, it's completely out of character in both ways where, Words. you know, what, like you said, and the fact that the film establishes them as two close friends and Peter is willing to not go through with it. And that's, yeah, but that's no, also... Hold on, hold on. He, he has a reason for not going through with it. He, uh, he doesn't know exactly what the blood is going to do and Harry wants to do it right away. And Harry, obviously, he doesn't want to wait because if he waits, he's going to end up exactly like his dad, where he took years and years and years to try to find a cure and he never did. Uh, so he wants to do it right away, and Peter's like, "No, I, I can't risk your life. I can risk something, something like this." Like, I don't think it. Yeah, and... I think it's super in character for Peter to care uh, about uh, doing this safe rather than doing this rashly, like Harry wanted to. Uh, if he had given his blood, I would have called that out. There of is character. a possibility of doing it safe. It's just the film doesn't allow for it because the whole film's theme is about time, and there's very little time. So therefore. The plot kind of screws itself, where Peter okay. has to make the decision to not help out his best friend. That's that not that's not what happens. Years. He says we need we can do it. We just need uh, that's, that's more time. That's what I'm saying. Like he's open for this. Yeah, he's but open. Harry he's isn't open screen. for more time. I just said he can't. He does. He can't wait from his perspective because firstly he doesn't want to wait years till uh just because that's how long uh, usually the, this kind of research could take. Um, especially considering that the blood is relating to the the spider venom, which we know is uh, later on. That it's tied to Peter's point, DNA. To Hold Oscorp. on, Oscorp's not not in the middle of this. This is between Harry. What? It's just Harry alone that I'm okay. I'm but I don't I don't see how that relates to yeah. what I'm saying. And uh, please let me finish. So uh, Harry, uh, to re keep researching uh, 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 Peter's blood, it will, could take a lot of time. Even if it doesn't, even uh, uh, if it takes a guess a year, a couple months, that he has a degenerative disease and he's starting to lose his motor functions. He already uh, keeps shaking all the time. He's uh, getting the those rashes the, that make him look like a goblin. Um, that's the kind of shit that he wants to repress as fast as possible. So he's like, if you don't give me it now, I'm going to end up like my dad. Uh, and that's like completely in character for him. And then when Peter says, well, we need to test it more, he says, we don't have time because from his perspective, he doesn't have time to uh, just keep testing and arrive at the same point where he, uh, his dad was at the end of his life where he couldn't even get out of bed. Well, it's very like odd to... how quick the disease works. Because compared to Norman, who's living, I don't know, oh, to the year of 16 until he passes away, this is suddenly the, like acting very I think we're quickly moving a little bit off the rails. I think we need to stay on, is it in character for him to give the blood or not? Um, what I want to mention real quick, uh, to, uh, you know, about the whole blood thing. So, uh, with Richard Parker, uh, there is a reason that he destroyed the spiders. Do you remember the reason? Yes, Oscorp wants to use the spider venom to weaponize it for their own purposes. Correct. I'm so, totally if you, if uh, he goes through with the idea of, you know, giving away his blood, what do you think Oscorp can do with that kind of stuff? Well, by giving away... Well, here's the thing, though. Giving away his blood. Now, this this is another knock on the plot. Because his blood is embedded with the spider venom, his own DNA that happened to work with uh, Peter after getting bitten by one of these spiders, it's compatible. So well, they don't know with that. Oscorp's, sorry, with Oscorp securing his blood, and especially for Harry's own means, the blood is incompatible. I don't... Yeah, I don't, but know what that, that has I to don't, do. I don't understand well, what it has that, to do yeah. with SK's point. Yeah. SK's point is so that if he gives his blood to Harry, uh, and he he needs to research it with uh, how to use it with Oscorp, because that's the the resources that Harry has at that point. Uh, Harry, uh, he would be giving Oscorp potentially uh, the the ability to make super soldiers. Harry's not which, in any an dealings with Oscorp. <laughs> Because if you if you recall the the board meeting, he want like all the samples were destroyed under Oscorp's authorization. So Harry well, had, like yeah, that's true. With, with the whole conflict him... with um, so with that, that doesn't with matter. That. I'm saying from Peter's he... perspective, he's like okay. So Harry is the CEO of Oscorp. If I give him my blood, uh, he would take it to Oscorp to uh, research it. If he does actually spend time to researching it as as opposed to just injecting it uh, in himself, which he also doesn't want him to just inject it in himself because that would uh, that could uh, end up hurting 
uh, Harry, which is exactly what happens. Mm -hmm. um, with the uh, from uh, Peter's perspective, it's like so he's gonna go to Oscorp. Oscorp is gonna have the, potentially the ability to create super soldiers, and he does not trust Oscorp, obviously, because of the the events of uh, Tasm One and what uh, he, he's learned about Oscorp. I don't understand why he would just give away his blood to Oscorp. Oh, uh, well, yeah, okay. Well, at that he, point, Harry has no says, real quick, I idea what Oscar is so, doing. Like, sorry, go ahead, ask guy. Yeah. So basically, what I was going to mention is that uh, he says you saw what happened with Kurt Connor. So he already knows that this could be like really unstable. It can give him uh, a bunch of abilities that he can't control. He might not even been cautious. Uh, excuse me, ca conscious of what he's doing, um, and could hurt people in the process, uh, including himself. Uh, including uh, anybody uh, that's uh, nearby him. Like, this isn't safe at all. Yeah, that's true. He doesn't know if it's going to be as stable with Harry as he was with him, which could cause another uh, lizard situation. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I'm full yeah, I am aware of that. I'm aware of Peter's perspective, why he wouldn't do it. I just, I just wouldn't believe... Well, again... The film is trying to play the issue with time, where Harry has no time uh, to think about this. He wants to spire, excuse me, spire blood pretty desperately. Yes. For his own, for his own health. Yes. But, but it's it's just like it creates an. It's there for like a. It's there for like a conflict. It's there just to prompt him to become the Green Goblin once when he finds a spider venom. I don't care why it's there. But the, the question is if it well, you, works. you should care because this, yeah, this we, is pretty. We'll... This is pretty rushed. This is a pretty rushed like element of the film. Is it? Why is it? Why is it rushed? Why? Because again, you're you're trying to back this up, saying through Peter's perspective, this would be uh, bad because Oscorp would have the means to secure this blood. Correct. But at that point, Harry has no idea what's going on under the workings of Oscorp until special projects has come out, comes out out how of does, Felicia. Okay, um, but how Felicia's does that relate works. to uh, the point we were making? We're talking about Peter's perspective. Peter's, Peter's perspective. That doesn't relate at all. Yeah, to why would we, yeah, why would we talk about Harry's perspective? That doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, doesn't it, shouldn't it matter? No, I mean, because no, it shouldn't. We're, because asked, we're, we're talking, talking about, about the is it does it make sense that Peter wouldn't uh give away his blood and yeah. from his perspective, yes. And then you're talking about from Harry's perspective what he knows about Oscar, which doesn't change anything, it doesn't matter. I mean, this was brought up on the Mauler debate, so I'm surprised you even forgot about this. I mean, I forgot well, a lot about that debate, it wasn't a good debate. I don't really. Well, Harry has his own means to have doctors. He has Oscorp, but he doesn't know what's going on underneath Oscorp with special projects. Well, that doesn't okay. matter. Yeah, I don't. Again, I think it we're talking matter. about from Peter. Why? <laughs> because this is this is Harry's life at risk here. Like Harry wants to cure himself, so he has that, that's a whole not... company full of doctors. I don't think you understand researchers. the question. You're talking about that he he has uh, other means other than Oscorp, but we're talking about if P uh, if Peter were to give. Uh, the blood to, um, to Harry. Could he go to Oscar? Would he go to Oscar? Most likely he would, considering that that's uh, Oscorp is like the most advanced, uh, has some of the most advanced labs in the world, and all the resources he need, as opposed to uh, starting up a completely new team, a completely new lab with completely new doctors to start uh, research, which could set uh, him back again years and decades potentially, which is the issue. He doesn't want to wait. So if he, Harry actually wants to cure himself as fast as possible, him going to Oscorp uh, to do so is what uh, is the most logical thing for him to do. And that's what Peter would imagine in that situation that could happen. As part of the reason why he wouldn't just give his blood. Okay. Well, I mean, if we're not going to like be on some sort of compromise on this, I just... I just think it's it's there just to rush for uh, the Green Goblin. I mean, all right. Well, I guess sure. uh, do we want to move on to Winter Soldier? Yes. Let's... Yeah, sure. All right. So I guess we'll start off with um, uh, the Lemurian star action sequence. Um, it's quite bad. Uh, it's not good at all. Um, I'll even ignore all the, the distance closing and shit for now, um, because I want to get into more critical issues with that. So, first, I want to I wanna go over the whole Cap versus Batroc thing, because that has two significant problems there. So, firstly, uh, Batroc, he's aware that the ship is being invaded right now, correct? 
Like, there's people with guns uh, taking out all of his men. Cap is there. Um, so, we, we, we know that Batroc knows this, correct? Yeah, and he's uh, holding, he's waiting for, like, some sort of ransom to come in at this deal with so, uh, all the shield hostages. So, the problem is, the problem is, um, if he just goes and, you know, has a fight with Captain America hand-to-hand -hand instead of using, like, a gun or uh, wh whatever grenade he used on him, if he used uh, if he used any of those weapons, he wouldn't have to deal with Captain America, and he could potentially escape. Whereas, if he just goes hand-to-hand -hand with Captain America, one, he's probably going to lose. Two, he's banking on the chance that Cap is just like, okay, let's have a fair fight. I won't use my shield or anything. Um, so that's dumb. Also banking on the chance that none of his uh, backup, uh, none of the backup people from the strike team come after him. Um, so either he gets captured or killed in this situation, and he takes the uh, he takes the sorry he makes the decision that makes that more likely, which, which makes him an idiot. So he shouldn't have just started that fight. Um, would you agree that's dumb of him? No, no, I I, I would agree that that whole scene is messy in places no i i don't think it i don't think like the whole fist fight um part of that lemurian star scene it like especially with cap letting go of a shield um did you also argue like it was there to make to have steve make himself look good for the fight i i i didn't say that i'm just i'm just uh, trying to focus on is i think you're thinking about the, the criticism that you fed brought up into the page but uh, SK didn't say that right now. Well, the, I don't yeah. think they brought it up in the debate, but um, regardless, uh, I just want to know, so do you agree that Batroc should not have done that? It's like one of the worst things he could have done. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I agree. Okay. I mean, so okay. Uh, just even further... Place. Go ahead. Well, yeah, so even further, Cap... Uh, is okay with this. He's okay with uh, treating this whole thing like a like it's a sporting event, like it's a competition. He's like, okay, I'll have a fair fight. I'll I'll get rid yeah, of that's my what shield. I mean. I I, um, I didn't find that as like sp for sport. I just think you know, Cab uses the shield um, as like a safeguard. But you know, without without his shield, uh, he easily just beats down a uh, bad strike, pushes him against like the door that so, inadvertently. So that wasn't, that wasn't the point. Natasha. He that wasn't the point. He willingly delays him. Like the point is is isn't that he can't take him out. It's that he willingly delays himself just to have like a basically a dick measuring contest with this guy when there's hostages on the line, like like they could be killed at any moment, and he's messing around. Yeah, at that like moment time is off the essence. Yeah, yeah. It's really stupid. Like not well, to mention I mean, like there's the moment where he kicks uh, Batroc's face. And after he does that, he waits for Batroc to get up, as opposed to uh, continuing... Just knocking him out. Yeah, which I think is really weird as well. No, no, I, I get where you guys are coming from. But I, I do recall, like, Kev tries to contact Natasha about status on the hostages, and Natasha gives him no response. And he gets which ambushed is, Yeah, it, which is even more worse. cause... Yeah, it's more cause of concern <laughs> for him. From his perspective, yeah. it's like, oh shit, maybe something went wrong. Mm -hmm. I need to get this sorted as fast as possible so I can uh, go uh, check on the hostages. Yeah, what if Nat's in danger? Yeah, Ugh. not only the hostages <laughs> now, but now a friend of his, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I would agree there. All right. And I, I think uh, if we, you know, look at the decision Peter made in TASM 2 after what we've went over, um, I think this is a way worse decision than what he did there. Like, Cap could have gotten a bunch of people killed for playing around like an idiot. As opposed to the opening scene with the rhino? Oh, we're not talking about well, that. Well, we can talk about scene, that. Though. But if you want we to... We can talk about if that. You, if you want to get into that, sure. <laughs> I mean... Do you want to move on to the well, rhino scene? I wouldn't mind, because, I mean... Sure, let's go. I don't really have any backing, because um, you guys... Uh, well, from your video, I mean, you did make a good point about the whole sequence, but I, um, I don't really have any defense for for that scene, unfortunately. Um, but that's fine. We can um, talk about the rhino stuff now. Uh, yeah, just one sec. Okay. Uh, uh SK, I'm sorry, dude. You're pretty low, man. I can hardly hear you. Um, I mean, if he's. I can try to be me. closer. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear you fine, Marcus, but I, I'm having trouble hearing SK. Maybe um, try maybe lowering you... Marcus and then yeah, uh, and then you just uh, up your raise, volume. Yeah, raise the raise the volume of a uh, 
like your computer in general. And then uh, me and SK should be like on the same level. Yeah. Well, my feed's just coming through my mic, so like I said, I can hear I can hear you fine, Marcus. I'm just having trouble hearing SK. Uh, you could go into Discord settings and up the volume because it also goes up to 200% if you need to do that. And then SK is going to be at like 400%. Because my mic is cranked up to the top, so hopefully my output's pretty good. Yeah, it's fine. Oh yeah, I can hear you much louder. All so, right. SK, I should probably hear you okay now. All right. Good. Uh, so, so <clears throat> what, what do you want to criticize about the Rhino scene? Um, okay, this is um this is one of my most agonizing scenes. Um, the whole opening chase scene with the truck is completely broken so mm -hmm. let me try to get on my notes here so i could just like go through this bit by bit so um this is um spider-man's first um first mission of the day he intercepts some um the York police department transmission about some truck full of um plutonium uh, plutonium that's been stolen and um and he goes in to uh find a truck that's uh that's in the middle of this pretty massive car chase. We're talking Dark Knight Rises level like scale here. And um, instead of just like, um, you know, what Spider-Man would normally do, find ways to like web the truck up or pull the driver out to web him up and then stopping the truck himself, he takes his time to introduce himself, quips with Alexi. Okay. Instead of just like okay, hold on, hold on. doing what I just said. Uh, I own interject already. Uh, so let's say he does pull him out. Let's say he... I guess he opens the window and pulls him out. Now the car, uh, the truck would be spinning out of control with the plutonium in the back. Is that true? Yes, that so is true. So don't you think he would be putting more people in danger if he were just to get Alexi out of the car? No, because uh, no, uh, he, he could fit himself inside the driver's seat window to yeah, stop the car. Yeah, but that takes car. time. The issue is you're raising no, uh, the ask. risk. I mean, to be fair, as opposed to Rhino being in the driver's seat, who has been crashing cars repeatedly. Yeah, but that's why... to the accelerator. That's why Peter goes uh, to take control of the, uh, the wheel. He distracts Rhino to get him to pull out his gun, and then he takes well, control of the wheel. That should have well. That should have been his first like line of action. He just seems to stop to talk to him for a bit. Oh yeah, yeah he, 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 he firstly he talks to get him to uh, open the window, and then when he does, he pulls out the gun, and then he dodges the bullets, uh, and then after he does that, he uh, grabs the wheel and diverts it to a less populated area. Okay, but in the next moment, before uh, Max gets, before Max comes in, he, like Spider-Man puts his hand inside the driver's seat window. While Alexi is doing whatever and Spiderman's doing nothing, do so we how do you compensate do that? Together? Yeah, I'd say that could help. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, are you familiar with how that works? Uh, Madcap, do you know how Watch Together works? Wait, wait. Oh, uh, no, no, I, I don't really. I just made a room. All right. Oh, awesome. All right. Maybe time. Hold on. Okay, I'm in. There we go. All right, I got it. Just gonna skip to that part. Yeah, so there we go. He's you can come introduce amazing. himself, taunting so Alexi, instead of Get just it? like... Yeah, so the point of him doing that is to get him to pull out his gun. Because why, why, why would Spyro want him to pull out so let's his say, gun? Let's say he reaches for the, the wheel, right? Uh, then Alexei wouldn't need to take care of the wheel, and he would grab the gun that's next to him, and Peter would be like halfway inside the truck, and more exposed to bullets. I know, but if Spider-Man's doing that, then why is he risking more danger in the dangerous situation here? Why is he? I just explained to you why he did that. So. Yeah, let's see. 
Mr. Criminal. Hey, my name is Spider-Man. You can call me Webhead. You can call me Amazing. Just don't call me late for dinner. Get it? <laughs> See, all this time, you can just, like, it. knock him out or do yeah, something. Yeah, if he knocks him out, then the car is gonna, uh, the so truck's gonna start going crazy. Out the fucking window. And then he's gonna uh, take time to get inside, and the truck is also gonna continue going crazy with plutonium in the back. The fact yeah, there's plutonium in the fair, back, he needs it to okay, keep well, going steadily. As opposed to, to well, truck, in fairness, as opposed to somewhere. leaving him in the truck when he's, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, basically rushing through the city, crashing into cars and stuff. Well, you want him out of the vehicle, like really. Yeah, you want when you can. <laughs> really but if quickly. he takes, it, if he just takes him out, then the truck's gonna start uh, driving. Uh, uh, have no driver and start gonna. Well, he can. He can get in. Well, he can, but he it takes in, time. That's the point I'm saying. He's well, I think, it, I think what he's doing here would the take thing more is, time. Alexei, I don't think so. The thing is, Alexei. Uh, he wouldn't drive it in a way where he wants the plutonium to explode. If Peter just l lets the truck uh, drive itself, it could uh, like flip over or shit like that, which could cause the plutonium to uh, explode. It's considering it's a very volatile thing. Plutonium was like still under safekeeping while those thugs were trying to unlock the vault for the plutonium. He doesn't know. He just knows that the plutonium is back there. He can't risk yeah, it. Plutonium's he can't risk it. Uh, from all he uh, can do is be like, okay, so I need to get the to do this in a way where the plutonium is safe, uh, to, to where the plutonium doesn't explode. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. I'm killer. that's fine. He's not going to risk it, but he could at least just like um, pull out Alexi and then stop. You know, I'm just repeating myself again, but he he has to stop the truck some way. Yeah, which he uh, plans to do once he can. So get I'm, I'm curious though. Uh, once he's out of the car, how would we um, expect that the, uh, the 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 plutonium would go off? Uh, like what, so, what? Basically, what would happen that would cause it? So the idea I have in mind is if Peter takes uh, him it takes him out of the car uh, as he's uh, as he's taking uh, what's his name uh, Alexei out. Uh, let's say the he grabs the wheel and the wheel just starts like going crazy uh, because of that. Like he pulls a straight left uh, because he's trying to grab onto something not to get pulled. And then because of that, the truck flips. Because the truck flips, all the plutonium starts uh, falling about and ends up being destroyed. Because Peter doesn't know that the the cases hmm. for the plutonium is actually are actually uh, as strong as they are at later on in the the, the film. So, if, so the idea is get his hands off the wheel. Uh, yes, the idea is to get uh, Alexei's hands off the wheel so he can uh, divert the truck into a less populated area so he hurts less people. And to also find a way, uh, an opening to get Alexei out eventually. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if he had planned ahead all that far because it is a very uh, delicate situation sure. with not knowing how to do it without fucking up with the, uh, the plutonium in the back. I guess I'll have to see what he does to see if the, how justified that is. Um, remember, I can also uh, I can also because I uh, I talked to thought about this a lot. Uh, he had uh, written to me a message that I just realized yesterday that I had pinned on our chat uh, where he talked about how the scene functions. If uh, I could read that uh, to to try to explain more the perspective. Mm -hmm. Not sure. All right. One second. Uh, okay. So what he says is, it seems to me the logic of the scene is Spider-Man needs the window rolled down so he can take the wheel, but he can't take the wheel because Rhino has the gun. He can't just take the wheel either because even if he, if Spider-Man webbed uh, the gun to the seat, Rhino would still swerve the whole truck and cause more deaths uh, trying to shake Spider-Man off. Uh, that could set off the plutonium. Um, Spider-Man also doesn't want civilians to get shot, so he sits on top of the truck so Rhino has to aim relatively high. Also, the specific gun model he has has two functions, semi-auto and auto. We know that the gun is on semi-auto when he fires his first shot at Spider-Man, but logically he'd want to put it on uh, uh, full auto to hit more shots. So his um, problem with your gun is him trying to switch it to fully automatic, giving Spider-Man the chance to take the wheel and turn the truck. Uh, that's... that's that seems Let's quite see a how lot. that follows. Yeah, I, I don't follow that. That's quite a lot of explanation. Well, hang on. I would. I think we can. Uh, you know, let's watch the scene. Let's see if it follows. All right. 
Yeah, so I don't know about that either because at any point while he's having this conversation, he can like hit the uh, hit the gas to try to shake him off right there, and that would be really bad if he did that. It would, but and I think uh, it's, given uh, what he's been doing the whole less time, chance that he would do that. Why exactly is that? Because Alexei is clearly trying to like. How would he know for sure? Well, he wouldn't know for sure anyway. That's kind of the point. He, so, he, like I said, I don't think he would be able to plan ahead that much in a situation like this. It's just trying your best uh, to get it to a point where... I think the, the best option for him here is get him out of control of the car immediately because um, him being... As long as he's in control in the car, uh, of the car, people are in danger. Well, yes, but if he is also... He takes him out to the, and the truck potentially flips, that causes more issues with the plutonium. Plutonium could cause more problems than just... Uh, uh, Alexei hitting cars because uh, plutonium, as far as I know, is ra uh, very radioactive, and uh, as we know, as established in the film, it's highly volatile. Um, so couldn't that risk? Couldn't we argue that risk still exists if he crashes into cars or accelerates? Oh, I do way. think there's a Chris uh, risk either way. Chris. I just, <laughs> there's a Chris. There's a risk either way. I just think the way he does it is fair enough from uh, like his perspective of trying to stop it. Maybe not the most optimal one, but considering the situation, I don't think uh, it's a fair. Uh, it's unfair to say that he would not know exactly what the optimal way is. Because I've seen a lot of people uh, trying to think of better ways, and honestly, all of a lot of them just end up uh, coming up with a lot of casualties either way. So I think the way Peter goes about it isn't mm. uh, the uh, like in pot out out of character for him. How, how how are the better ways that people propose will cause casualties? What are um, the better ways that people have pitched? Uh, she, I, I need to remember because I have the better. I could people. pitch a better way. He could. Sure. Spider Man well, could I, physically. I guess like we'll start Slater. with him taking him out because that's the main thing that people so, seem to say. Yeah, so let's say he. Uh, there are two ways to take him out without knocking him out and with knocking him out. If he knocks him out, uh, there's a chance that he's gonna like. Uh, fall down on the wheel, grab the wheel as he's falling down, and cause the truck to start swerving and potentially flip, right? Uh, oh, yeah, you know, that what? is possible. Okay. I mean, there's another way he could pull He could pull the uh, the driver's seat door open. He could pull it out, because he's Spider-Man. He has strength That's for that. That's true. And just oh, yeah, that was uh, what you have said uh, as well. But uh, he could... Uh, Rhino could... Uh, Alexei could definitely just pull out his gun when he does that, which is another issue Peter's dealing with. Well, when he pops his head into the... Uh, let, please let me finish. Uh, when he pops his head into the... into the window, it seems like he's uh, he's looking at what resources uh, Alexei has, and he definitely has the gun there, which uh, potentially... Uh, could uh, get end up getting uh, Peter shot. So if he just and pulls it out, be a quick draw. what'd you say? It should be a quick draw to pull out the gun because Alexi's not doing anything until like. Well, it takes Peter a lot of force to take out the the window. So you'd assume Peter wouldn't be the closest uh, uh, to the window uh, to the not the window the the car door. Sorry, uh, the door uh, truck door. Uh, so mm -hmm. if he pulls it out. Would uh would Peter think that uh, Alexei could have enough time to pull out the gun and start shooting? I I definitely yeah, think he's that's not the case. enough time to introduce himself. Uh, I guess what I would say is that as opposed to uh, uh a mass like a bunch of cars getting flipped over or crashed into or you know potentially an explosion. <clears throat> I, mean, I don't know. The, the that seems is, like a, a lot can, uh, less that. riskier compared I can, to. That. I don't think so, but I can uh, also say that no cars get hit while Peter is uh, distracting Alexei. So well, that well, that's because he's lucky. I wouldn't say lucky more so than uh, Peter choosing his time well to do what he's doing. Well, because he can't really control if they if they show up there because uh, well, Rhino could, would still be was, willing uh, to, to he crash was, into um, them. Swinging towards the truck. You could see ahead in the street if there were many cars or not. That's well, yeah, but they can turn in, they can be in front no, of No, yeah, it doesn't mean that uh, it's impossible, but I'm saying that the risk is minimized as opposed to being uh, as risky as just gotcha. a, a street full of cars. Not saying that there is no risk. Uh, there is quite a lot of risk, I think, mm -hmm. in every way he goes about it. And I think just he is prioritizing uh, uh, trying to get the plutonium not to go off. Hmm. 
So I guess what I'll say about this for now, uh, Mad J, I don't know if you'll agree with this. It seems like uh, whichever way we go about this, there could be a risk in either one. Um, for now, I'm going to say I think it's fine. I'll think about it uh, further uh, if I want to explore this. But for now, I think um, if there's tons of risks you can you can account for when going into this, um, I guess from his perspective, he'd want to choose the one that uh, I guess would uh, seemingly be uh, what, what's the word? Uh, Less risky. I guess so. Um, it, the the one that comes to mind first, basically, and the reason is because like he has to do something on the spot. So yeah, you, know, you, you I think you that's need fine. To keep thinking on the spot in a situation like this. And Alexei, uh, as we we'll, as we learn as the scene progresses, he's quite unpredictable, which I think is not something Peter could have accounted for. Uh, just uh, yeah, he doesn't he, is, he doesn't he doesn't have much normal. time to react. Yeah. Um, however, I just I I found I found this pretty dodgy when I was watching this, so. I mean, um, we, we can definitely talk look about at this more. right here. Look, he has his hand through the driver's seat window while Alexi like, is fixing his gun or whatever. And yeah. in the moment, in the time that he has here to put his hand there, he could at, at least like do the same, take the time to I don't know. Like I said, pull out the door, get Alexi out of the fucking driver. Yeah, but uh, window, the, and, and he's uh, Alexi isn't something. holding the the wheel, and that could cause the truck. Only, for... He has both hands on the I gun. I think. Though. Hold up. Exactly. So that's the point. He uh, has I think both... we need to. He has we need both... to. Okay. Look closely. It looks like he's trying to grab the wheel here. See what I mean? Uh, could, okay, let's yeah, re yeah, rewind that uh, and let's see again. Yeah, I think yeah, right he's trying there. to hold the wheel yeah, and he's... try to turn yeah, he... his gun into automatic. Uh, that's what. Yeah, I think he made that to. turn. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no. Yeah, P Peter does the turn because it means going to a less populated uh, street, and because uh, if if he kept going the direction it was going, it was definitely like going to hit a building. So he needed to do that. And so the the thing is, if Peter mm -hmm. tries to take out uh, Alexei at that point, the truck would not be as stable because nobody would be driving it. And so Peter does it because he wants to uh, like not have the truck just uh, explode because of the plutonium at that point. Okay, I mean, if there's plutonium mm -hmm. at risk, then Peter's first instinct would to go to the tow truck, to the tow van, and take out the gunman to make sure that the plutonium doesn't, like, go into risk of falling so out. So you just the... said they're gunmen, right? So that means they have guns. Well, Spider-Man is Spider-Man. He has spider sense. He has abilities okay, to... Okay, but that's not bullets. the point. He, they have guns. Let's say he gets in from through the only opening there is in the on the top. One of them pulls their gun, shoots, and ends up shooting the plutonium. Boom, plutonium explodes. Okay, well, okay, well, Spider Man could like take the guns away from him with his web. Yeah, but the point is, have you he seen has, how yes. have you seen how small the hole is that they get uh, get they get inside the truck from? Uh, they need. Wait, I'm a, confused. So what's the, yeah, the compartment. what's the point being made here? Uh, that Peter should have gone uh, directly after the. Uh, In the hole. Yeah. Because out, because no out no crazy. no that's not a good idea. Let me. So here's the thing. Um, this is actually interesting because this is another justification that could be made in the Winter Soldier for why Bucky doesn't jump in the hole. The thing is, he doesn't know what's in the hole. Um, he doesn't know like what he's in for. That's probably not the safest option. Let's say, yeah, he does dodge a bullet. Okay, and the bullet hits the plutonium, and then something goes off. That sounds like a bad idea. But these guys are stealing plutonium. Why would they want to shoot it if Spider-Man would want well, to Well, I, I didn't say they would want to shoot it. I'm saying they might do it by accident. And even if, even if not by accident, we've, uh, they can be careless to a point where if someone is going to stop their planes and get them arrested, uh, by that point, had them shooting that person who's trying to stop them could be possible. And if they can't shoot, a bullet could hit the, the plutonium. And uh, that's definitely not something I think Peter would risk. Would you agree with that? Uh... Repeat, I'm sorry, sorry, repeat that last part again. Uh, that, uh, let's say uh, he, from Peter's perspective, if he gets yeah. in uh, and s a a and either of the, the people inside, or he, he, I don't think he knows exactly how many people are inside. So any of the people inside. There's like two guys, though. I 
Dude, well, does he know? Not, that's the that point. Matter. I'm saying from Peter's perspective. I don't know if it's two. I don't care if it's two guys or a million. I'm saying from Peter's perspective. Does he know how many there are? What if it was five? Yeah. What? In the, even then, it doesn't really matter. Even if it's two, if Peter thinks but there's a chance they could try to shoot him, person. and that those bullets could potentially hit the plutonium and explode it, and he what like his. Uh, a priority at that moment is to keep the plutonium safe because of how volatile it is. I don't think he would risk it to uh, have bullets flying in inside that uh, armored car. Yeah, no, that'd be dumb. I would have criticized that if he did that. <laughs> yeah, just uh, walking inside a hole where he doesn't really know what's inside. And if he tries to stick his head inside, they can pull out their guns and shoot him. It's the kind of thing where he, the, the hole is way too small for him to actually do anything uh, in, uh, in enough time to stop them both without risking the plutonium. Uh, I, I see where you're coming there. I, I just, well, I mean, based on, I mean, is it possible to use previous Spider-Man media to counter this? I don't think so, because we have to go by what's in this universe. I mean, what exactly point, what's the point you're trying to make? I mean, well, like, look at the, uh, uh, I would say, I'm trying to use Spider-Man 2, for example, if that's necessary. Okay. If you guys are open for that. I mean, I, like, I'm uh, just curious about what your point is going to be. Well, I'm just saying, like, based on what we know on Spider-Man media, I mean, Spider-Man is an amalgamation of many different powers and abilities where Sp Spider-Man can, like, counteract against gunmen pretty easily. So I, I don't think... Well, we, that's I don't not think the point. What you're yeah, that, yeah, I don't think that really changes so the here's, point. Let me clarify again. So... What I said about him going in the hole, yes, he can counteract uh, the bullets, or sorry, he can counteract uh, the guys with the bullets. However, that doesn't matter because even if he does, um, the bullets won't hit him. It could hit the the, the, the plutonium. So, yeah, if any of them just, are, are holding not, their guns not good. at the point he walks in, <laughs> that means that uh, one of them could shoot and the bullet could hit the plutonium, even if it doesn't hit Peter. Yeah, it's not a good idea. I got no comments. I mean, I we mean, can I watch more of the scene just, because I feel I, like it's something by, uh, dodgy afterwards. Uh, Sorry, what dodgy part are you you're talking about? Uh, here, we'll play it. Okay. So, uh, he doesn't know that like where that taxi's going to land, and even then, let's look at this. Ooh, so, ooh. he... He leaves the truck to save one guy when yeah. there's so many other people that would be yeah, in trouble so many there. people are like caught in that shit it's insane well i don't think you could stop the cars but he can definitely stop a a, a someone I, from getting hurt from getting a car thrown at them like at I'm that gonna... point let's say he jumps to try to stop the cab the truck is too fast so he wouldn't be able to and then he he would uh, take so long by doing that that max would also die i don't think there's a way for him to prevent those other deaths i mean you're right well i think the main point numbers. is his priority should still be on the truck uh, I think like, if people he can are save someone, either way. I think if he can save uh, someone at that point, uh, and he knows that he can just re can't really just stop the truck right away because well that's what happens. Uh, he tries to, uh, he doesn't really know how to stop the truck, which is why the truck keeps going and he just you know swerved it away as Butcher trying to stop it like I said before. Uh, so if he sees someone that's in danger, I do think he would stop to help them. Uh, well, ev I mean, everyone else is in danger in that scene, mm -hmm. like more in, in even more immediate danger. Uh, Can I add? Such as, uh, like, you, well, you think he, would, he could kind of do what? Shit. Just try to stop the other cars from being thrown around in the middle of the street? Because I don't, I don't think he has the reflexes I think and at the that, at that point, energy and strength to do that. Like with all. I think at that point, uh, he has to immediately just take him out of the truck. Um, that's he's kind of forced to do that in that situation um, because at, he, like he's at a point where okay this is this is too much he's had the uh, control of the the truck for too I long I don't think so I, think I need to get him out of there he still has the plutonium so he can't do anything he's like I I can't really just have him well stop. as opposed to he's leaving the plutonium on the tender the truck is on, so that's enough force to let loose the plutonium at that point crashing oh, so, like sorry sorry what, what could you repeat cars. I didn't I didn't understand what you said repeat please okay. <clears throat> like burling through four different cars has enough force to like release all the plutonium. Uh, it could be, but because he's already been doing that, I don't think he. Uh, what really... I'm 
uh, expects what I'm that to uh, is... be the case. I think if he thinks that, uh, for example, stop. Uh, let's say he uh, he stops the truck, uh, and even if it doesn't flip over, it happens what uh, like exactly like it happened where the the car uh, the car the police cars stop just uh, behind them. Uh, the uh, the they, the the people behind there they open the armored car and they start shooting against the police officers right so let's say the police officers shoot at them could those bullets potentially hit the plutonium that's a risk he's uh you know running at and he, from his Peter's perspective he doesn't see a reason why Rhino would stop because it's a car chase if he stops that's you know uh, a weird decision from his part from Peter's perspective so uh if, if Peter is uh, he relies more on Alexei is going to keep trying to uh, drive away as opposed to uh, like, you know, those people are going to die, though, like the cars that Alexei is hitting. But the plutonium is going to be safer in that way, as opposed to if uh, they open the the armored car and the plutonium potentially gets shot. And also, uh, I do think as well, because uh, uh, Max is just like, this very confused person running around in the middle of the street, Peter could think that it could cause uh, more car accidents, uh, and that's why he tries to uh, save Max, just like to add to why he would try to do that. Um, well, I think the bigger problem here is that um, car accidents are more likely if you just leave the plutonium truck unattended. Yes, but I'm saying um, uh, regardless of the uh, plutonium be, uh, truck, because uh, that uh, those ones appear is just kind of uh, thinking, yeah, those are going to happen. And at this point, there's nothing I can do to stop it, but at least I can save this one person. Because um, at this well, point... he would probably he save more do... people if he just threw them out. Well, like I said, I don't think so, because that means the truck could potentially uh, flip and could cause more issues. It's why he doesn't do it at, uh, at first, and it's why he doesn't. He continues not to do it uh, afterwards. Well, well the truck something... could have those issues if it's just left unattended. Yeah. Well, well, I, I, right, I just said it, it, that uh, Alexei would continue trying to uh, drive away. He's seen and how Alexei drives. The, he he, he doesn't think the... that Alexei is just going to uh, end up flipping his own truck and put himself in danger uh, of exploding. Like, he knows how volatile the shit in the, the back of the truck he's driving is. So I guess I'd be more okay with that if, after saving Max, he immediately goes to uh, to the truck. He doesn't do that. He just stops well, to talk with him right here. Well, that's why I'm saying that uh, that's, uh, that he, uh, fucking uh, Max is a confused person in the middle of the street, so Peter wants to calm him down before uh, going out because it could cause accidents that Peter is just completely unaware of and can't do anything about because he's busy dealing with Rhino. Uh, but what do you long? mean uh, he's calling, calming him down? I think uh, the truck would take precedent over making sure this guy is calm. I just yeah, said this, why. Because he could cause... Uh, uh, because a confused person running accidents? around in the middle... A confused person running around uh, in the middle of the street with cars uh, trying to drive away from a truck that's hitting people. Uh, those cars probably as, would be more reckless. And therefore, they as could opposed not see to... Him. But Max As is opposed safe. to leaving a speeding truck unattended. Yeah. Yeah, but I just worse. said why he would leave the truck unattended. I've already explained why. But that's why. worse. <laughs> why? Yeah, that is worse. Because that would get more people killed. Why? Like, it's yeah. the, the probability is hot, way more likely. Why? Because at what least here, at least what? here. Explain so here's the thing. Me. If people see him, they're not, they're at least going to uh, steer away from him. And on top of that, uh, if need be, they can, or, or sorry, if possible, they can uh, hit the brakes really quickly as opposed to the truck that's speeding and they can't really do anything about that because it's speeding into them and crashing into them and causing basically a chain reaction of uh, crashes. Yeah, because this is a swarming New York City street filled yeah. with traffic. This is, this is pretty heavy I for mean, people the, to the be at street where uh, Alexi goes right after he hits the cab is pretty clear. Uh, they're no, pretty no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what which street is clear. It, this is a busy, it does matter because Peter will Peter street. would be able to see the street because he was right near the truck. He would see there are less cars there, and therefore it makes more sense to try to uh, first save this one person and also to stop <laughs> him potentially causing accidents as opposed to just letting him be. Uh, and uh, what about yes. the 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 person that would have been in the taxi? I'll give you this. Oh, that person's um, okay. de dead, probably. Uh, I think he expects either two people to check on him or just, you know. Well, they can't They can't get him out efficiently. He's best suited for that. Um, I, I Like, he could be getting, like, uh, he could be in imminent danger right now, and he's not doing anything. 
uh, the, the the cab driver. Whereas with Max, if he just leaves him, it's like okay, doesn't seem yeah, like I mean, there's going to be could cause more issues than just one person dying. But uh, the cab driver, you think he should have checked on him as well? Um. Well, that's the thing. If well, he okay. So I think that's better. Uh, it's better for him to check the the cab driver if he was going to check on people here, um, because. Uh, he he's in more need than Max is at the moment, uh, but if he if he were to leave the cab driver to go after the truck, then I wouldn't have no problem with uh, him leaving the cab driver. If that makes sense. Uh, I don't know. For me, I always thought he was like, okay, so the uh, the citizens people are just gonna check on the cab driver uh, because at the uh, and I'm gonna stop Max from uh, being all flustered and confused in the middle of a street where cars are gonna be uh like speeding because they're trying to get away from this truck that's driving around here uh i don't see why spider-man has to take the time to compose a person because the guy's safe he's he's already he's in the middle of the that street point. that's the point i'm saying and he's flustered he doesn't even uh really understand what's going on you can see that max is kind of like uh light-headed i guess could be the word where he, he he's like oh shit spider-man saved me and he he kind of uh, uh froze in place because of that and uh, I think Peter would be like, okay, so I need to get this guy to a point where he is able to get out of the middle of the street, uh, where it won't cause uh, more issues. Can't he just tell him? They're still in the street, well, he, though. He does. He's, yeah, he calms him down. He can, if he just says it to him, he could cause well, extra panic. Well, he should it's tell him immediately. Him oh, I think it's more effective to calm him down as opposed to potentially uh, making him panic. Look, I'm going to give you this. That's well, fine that Spider-Man took the time to save Max at that very instant moment. I just don't think he shouldn't like waste any time to compose him cuz at the end of the day, he's he's already safe. Like no car is, like especially in this moment, like no car is coming in between them. Yeah. No car is approaching them. Um Max is safe. Yeah, so the, but like I said, that would be something he can't account for if cars start coming after and Max is still frozen but in the middle the of the The thing street. is The thing is cars hitting Max, that's a pretty big if compared to uh, Rhino in his truck already crashing Which, into cars. What could Peter like, do at, right uh, now? What What could Peter do about that? I, he can't really um, stop the truck. We've already got had the discussion. That's not he can't necessarily really true. Um, How would he and, stop and the plus, truck? Well, uh, he should make the attempt to. He shouldn't How? just leave it unattended. How? That's what I'm asking. Because the point is, he doesn't. Whatever stop he him plans to do with it later. Whatever well, he plans that, to like, do with it later. I already talked about that. I said I don't think he has a plan of what to do later. Then Spider-Man's an idiot. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's a situation where... No, I don't think, I think it's a situation where... Yeah, it's, I, we just already that. talked about grabbing so, him out of the truck. I swear to Christ. Are we going around and around? Oh, hang on. I'm a, already so here's the thing. I'm all right with him not doing that earlier. I'm all right with him not doing that earlier. But this seems like you, uh, this is something that he has to do now. Why? He's going to cause the same issue as because, it would before. So what, so what do you expect issue. him to do about the truck? How long Does has it been since have... the first Amazing Spider-Man again? The first was That's 2012, the second one was 2014. Uh, oh, you mean no, uh, no, how no, much I'm time is between reasons. films? It's one year. Well, yeah, like considering the amount of the whole year that he's been Spider-Man doing this on a day-to-day -day basis, you think it'd be easy for Spider-Man to like stop the truck? Okay, but I'm asking how, and all you guys are saying is grab him out of the truck, which I already explained how that causes... Uh, bro, how that you causes... Know, I've been trying to come issues. in with a pitch. Okay, then say it. Okay, well, okay, minutes later, Spider-Man stops a bus after it gets inflicted by the truck, so... Yeah, but that's not strange, the same, though. How but, is it not the same? Because the, uh, it wasn't a speeding bus running towards him. He, for him but to stop that... Truck, really, okay. that, that is a, it's no, a that's, massive bus. Yeah, okay, the thing is, it's a lot of force, but it's not as much force as it would need to stop a truck uh, that's speeding, that it has someone hitting the acceleration. When uh, the Alexei hits the bus, his own truck stops, as and then uh, Peter stops the bus from flipping over. And that's way less force than he would need to just get in front of the bus and try to stop it. Then that's just, you're, you're adding in an inconsistency on Spider-Man's strength then. If Spider-Man can stop the bus, he he could obviously just stop the truck at any I don't, given moment. Why? I already said it's less force. I think that, that depends. Would, it's less force. If the if the car, I think if the truck hits the, 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 the truck because of uh, transferring energy, it's going to be less because you lose energy when you're transferring it from one thing to another. Uh, not to mention the bus, the traction would be against it, continue to go forward as opposed to a truck that would, you know, obviously continue to going forward. Not, uh, not to mention yeah, it's that the, the bus, ha the, the truck has Alexi heating the accelerator as opposed to the bus that uh, causes Alexi to uh, come to a halt really fast. 
So that means that uh, uh that, that he's no longer having any force being pulled against him after he, it, the hit has already happened. Whereas uh, with Alexei hitting the acceleration, uh, that means that it's a continuous force that he has to fight against. It's much harder for him to stop the truck just by pure strength. Not to mention, let's say he gets in front of the, the truck like he does uh, in front of the bus in uh, Spider-Man 2 to try to stop it. Uh, be like you, you've been saying that there would be cars that Alexei would be hitting. Don't you think uh, Peter would end up getting hit by those cars as well? And that would hinder him from doing that just by stopping well, it? Or he gets hit by a cop car and he still latches onto the hood of the cop car. Yeah, but uh, it's a, a speeding truck that would be hitting a lot of cars. You just said it's a lot of cars that would be hitting. I don't. I don't follow your point. I, I have no so idea let's say he's saying. in front of the of the truck already trying to stop it. So that's a lot of force he's exerting. So let's say he okay. hits a, a, a and Alexei hits a car. So that's a, a lot of force that's being exerted onto Peter, which causes uh, which would cause him to pro either uh, potentially lose his strength or uh, and obviously it would cause him to um, spend more energy, which means it's harder for him to try to stop the truck. And because Alexei would be hitting. Uh, quite a few cars, uh, according to what you've been mm -hmm. saying, that means that uh, it will get to a point where Peter's way too beat up because of how uh, how many cars he would get hit by, as opposed to just one cop car that he gets hit and he has enough time to recuperate anyway. Well, it's I mean, not how possible you're for... Go ahead. Yeah, so what I was going to say, so is it not possible that, because um, he does try to take the wheel out at one point, um, is it not possible that he does that and he knocks him out in the process? Uh, I don't think that's uh, super wise uh, to just knock uh, Alexei out. Well, knock him out and throw him out. Well, if he tr throws him out, I don't think he would be able to continue holding onto the wheel properly, which again causes the issue of potential. So what I would say is rip mm. the door off, and then once you've done that, grab the wheel. Then once you've done that, throw him out. Once you've done that... Well, that's uh, the issue him. with the gun. Uh, he can't if he rips the door off. That gives enough time to get the gun to shoot him. Um, oh, compared to so, the amount of time Spider-Man talks to him. Yeah, yeah, well, we he should have gotten rid of the. I swear to God, every well, time we're getting really back to the scene, well, then, well, well, then, back when to he him. when he was having the the scene where he's like, "Oh, you have a problem with the gun? Let me uh, help you that uh, help you with that." He should have uh, ripped the gun from his hands, basically, and thrown it out. If he already has a hand on the wheel. And then Alexei, but uh, then Alexei could potentially hit the brakes, uh, which could cause issues with the plutonium in the well, back end. Throw him. That would actually help his case if he yeah, hit the that brakes. Would, that would help. That would that not. Would help a lot. If I let's say he he hits the, the brakes, Peter doesn't know how uh, secure the plutonium is in the back. He hits the brakes. The, the plutonium could just fall out because uh, you know the the containment ha would have been open well, by now, which is well, a fair the problem thing is the... they bounce all over the place. Wait, what'd you say? They got strong casing, so at one point where Spider-Man is seizing all of Plutonia, one just... Wait, like I said he doesn't know by that hand. point how strong the cases are. Well, That's he doesn't just... know, yeah, in fairness, oh, he doesn't know. God. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going by what the film establishes as his well, perspective. Well, he doesn't know, I'm... Yeah, you're going by hindsight. Yeah, uh, I, you can't use hindsight to argue from someone's perspective. Well, that would be, yeah, that would be post-talk. Um... Like, I, I can definitely... I, 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 I would agree that there could have been uh, better ways for him to deal with it, but I don't think mm -hmm. it's unreasonable to think that he could have uh, uh, acted the way he did uh, because of he's such a high stress situation. The way he's doing all these moves, like that, would have been a good opportunity for Spider-Man to go inside the hole from from the ceiling to knock out those guys. We j already talked about how. Well, how I we think we talked about the issues the with the hole. Yeah, we already talked about that. Oh, yeah, God. I don't think the hole would work out. Yeah, you can. Um, you just talk gonna... back to the same arguments all the time. You shouldn't get inside the hole. Yeah, what I'm gonna say is I think you're onto something here. I'll uh, I'll keep this in mind, um, but uh, I'm I'm happy to move on to another point. Yeah, go for it. If uh, we're ready. Yeah, uh, Winter Soldier now. Uh, well, no, just with this sequence because there was one more thing I wanted to bring up. All right. Uh, so call. he just like he, he picks up the call with Gwen at yeah, like the, the worst call. time possible. I um, yeah, I was thinking about that actually when I was watching the film today, and I don't think it's uh. Uh, it's out of character for him to do so. Uh, in the last film, um, okay, is that your argument that he shouldn't have picked up? So, the so basically, the hey, idea is, is he shouldn't. Like... Well, hang on, hang on. Let me explain. Yeah, so, right. um, he should be going after the truck. That should be his priority. There's no reason to pick up the phone during the the while that's all happening. 
Okay, so for all he knows, people are getting crushed while that's happening. Okay, so yeah. uh, from uh, from what we know of uh, the Amazing Spider-Man one, you remember that scene where uh, Gwen is cleaning his wounds, and she says, "I know what this is. My dad, you should be a cop." And uh, every day, I just never knew if he was gonna come back or not. So let's say, uh, so she she calls Peter. Peter isn't at the graduation. It's like, oh, that's weird. He's probably you know being Spider-Man. So he but he's not she... Captain Stacy. He's not her dad. He's Spider Man. So of course, Spider Man. Well, hang on. Let's that, let's let him isn't... let's let him get to the point. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Uh. So anyway. Because yeah. I don't know what the point is yet. She calls. Uh. So she calls him to check on him. So what Peter would th uh, I think what Peter would think is if I don't answer, uh, I think Gwen could think that I'm dead or that I'm in like insane danger, which is something he doesn't doesn't want to do. It's part of him trying to. Uh, live his life with Gwen uh, in a way that doesn't really hurt her by including her in his life, even though he is Spider-Man, which is going against the promise he made to uh, Captain Stacy. It's him trying to live with breaking that promise, but also keeping Gwen safe. So from his perspective, he's like, okay, so I'm going to say I'm okay, and I'm going to be, you know, there in five minutes. Uh, and which, uh, and then he, the, and then the, uh, he's using those cars to find a, an easier way to follow the truck, I imagine. Uh, especially right after he had to deal with uh, just uh, picking up all those uh, plutonium things, uh, I think uh, he was uh, he would uh, he would, and he all he just got hit by a car. So I think he could be like, okay, so I'm gonna take a breather for a few seconds, and then she calls me, and then I'm gonna answer because if I don't, that could worry her, and I love her a lot, so I don't want her to uh, think that I'm dead. Uh, and I do think he would prioritize something like that, uh, especially when as. Uh, uh, especially when he doesn't really, uh, well, he can see that where the truck is going doesn't really have any cars in front. And then when he gets to the the truck, he sees that uh, it's about to hit a bus, and then he stops the bus from being, uh, uh, from flipping over. Uh, can't he tell her this stuff afterwards, though? That's yeah. Uh, yeah, but the issue is uh, he doesn't want her to worry. If he doesn't answer, she's going to uh, think that he could be dead, and it's part of him right. trying what to live with the 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 pro breaking the promise, but also keeping her safe. Like I said, uh, if well, they... what I'm saying is he can answer later. Yeah, or and just not, not even not that. Just because call. he doesn't pick up a just because he doesn't pick up a phone call, that doesn't mean like oh shit, he's in danger. It's like that's not the no, assumption I would have issue. if someone doesn't. Yeah, that, I get that's, a lot of that's not exactly what I mean. Uh, if, okay. Uh, if he picks up, uh, so he's picking up the. Uh, the call just say that he's okay because he he doesn't want her to worry and she knows he's spider-man she knows he's doing his spider-man thing and because she uh what he said of what she said about her dad how she's always you know afraid he's not gonna come back uh she was afraid that he was never gonna come back uh he she uh she could be uh, she from his perspective she could be like uh oh i called them and he is, you know, busy tr putting himself in danger, and I don't know if I'm gonna see him again or not. If he tries to reassure her in the way that he does, he's just like, no, I'm fine, I'm gonna be there in five minutes. Uh, that makes her much calmer at that moment, which would also help her deliver a speech that isn't, uh, you know, fully just her panicking during it. Uh, which... That conversation's not, that conversation's not delivered in any urgency, it's played for laughs. So well, Peter is I definitely in urgency, he's like, I'm gonna call you back, bye. Well, Gwen is not. Well, I, well, yeah, Gwen I guess, is not. She just wants well, to know where are you because you're not here. And then well, when well, she hears sirens, things. she does get bad. She does start to uh, be like, "Wait, those are sirens." So a couple things about that is mm. I don't think that would take precedent over the fact that people could die at any moment. And second of all, um, the problem with that is when he's when he picks up the call, he can just be like. Hey, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm in the subway. Um, I'm almost there. I'll be, I'm just running a bit late. I'll be there soon. And then and he'll hang say, up. "Hey, I'm running a bit late." And then she says, "Am well, I hearing sirens?" And then he needs to reassure her. Uh, let's see, because I I don't remember that entirely. Oh shit! I think it stops before that. Yeah, this this God damn so it. far. All right. Um. Yeah, he says, hey, I'm almost there, I'm just running a bit late, and then she's like, oh, are those sirens that I'm hearing? And it's like, what? No, no, I'm fine. Yeah, I see what they're trying to do there. They're trying to play in the fact that Spider-Man is having trouble, um, well, sorry, not Spider-Man, Peter is having trouble with his dual life, but there's not really much of a count or any consequence, because he misses uh, out on his speech, but... I don't think we want to go there. No, because it doesn't, it never goes there. They break up. 
<laughs> Wait, you're saying I... there there is no consequence for him for him trying to balance his two lives, such as you know Gwen dying at the end of the film. Gotcha. But I mean, that has nothing to do with, with this current scene. And but you well, no, but you said that the film never goes there. I don't understand what the issue is. Or you're saying that well, there's, there's no consequence of this scene. Well, Gwen makes a choice to step in a war zone. That's that. Therefore, she does die. Yes. Uh, but anyway, but uh, you're saying that the, the, there is okay. That's all I'm, I ask you. You didn't answer. So you're saying there is no consequence for him uh, in this scene trying to uh, d deal with his two lives, or you're just saying in general in the film? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like is trying to, it's trying to conflict with his life with Gwen. But yes. again, given this situation. Spider-Man should take president on the truck and not bother answering the call. I mean, heck, my family calls me on the job. Doesn't mean my family thinks I'm dead if I don't. Yeah, answer. but that's a completely different thing. You're not. Uh, I, I I don't think you're risking your but life is, like a Spider-Man. Well, I think a more comparison. Uh, I guess a more apt comparison is, in fairness, uh, she expects him to be here at a at a certain time, and he's running late. Yeah. So if he's not uh, answering the phone, that can. Uh, uh, cause her, uh, that can cause concern. Um, yeah, however, like I don't see how that's worth miss. it compared to people dying at the moment. Well, but like you said, he he, he said uh, you want him to say he said he says um. Fucking, you want him to be like okay, so uh, I'm running a bit late and then hang up, right? Just it'd be very well. That was one option I gave. Like it, okay. even if that was so. Yeah. So yeah. let's see how the the scene follows. I'm sorry, I'm running a bit late. I got stuck in some traffic. The timing is terrible. It started already. I know, I'm sorry. Where are you? First in Broadway, second in Broadway, third in Broadway. Uh, five minutes, ten pops. Are those sirens? So, I feel like he could have just said, Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm running a bit late. I'll be there soon. Bye. Yeah. So don't you think she, she would have uh, she would have panicked the same way if he had hung up, as opposed to him explaining, Oh, just like, I got stuck in some traffic. And then, uh, it, you know, she says, Oh, my speech is about to start. Uh, he's like, yeah, no, I'm gonna be there. Like, I think if he just hangs up as well, it's uh, it's gonna cause her the same panic. Well, I mean, I think he needs to end it off as quick as possible because, sure, she might panic, but like, what's worse, people dying or her panicking? Uh, how long does like, the call take? Uh, no, Peter, no, Peter, no silence. See, at that point, she, no. she's panicking. Not really. She just comes off like. Like a quirky. Well, I, I what think do it's kind of quirky? semantics. I would. She's <laughs> she's not wait, quirky wait, wait. at that moment. <laughs> what? She's like Peter. She's a. Uh, she's like wait. Uh, are those fact, sirens? Okay. Are you putting yourself in danger right now? It's it's she she's concerned at that point. So that's the that's the point. Uh, regardless, still, um, people's lives versus uh, whether or not she might panic. Uh, mm -hmm. I think people's lives would take precedent over that. Yeah. Because people living, like, that's m way more important than somebody might get panicked. Or somebody confused in the middle of the street. Mm, no, Correct, I, yeah. Uh, I don't agree with that. I think uh, Peter, considering how much he cares about uh, Gwen, he would take uh, the time to make sure she doesn't uh, think, she isn't uh, panicky and thinking he's not okay. Uh, and she, he's like, he knows she's about to deliver her speech, uh, her speech as well. She, she wouldn't want her to be in a, any state of uh, worrying about Peter, like on the back of her mind. Like he cares about Gwen a lot. I, I think he could definitely keep her interest as like one of his priorities at that moment. And also, it's, it's not like he's not going after the trucks right now. Those cars are speeding. Those cop cars are speeding right after the truck. Uh, yeah, but he can get there faster. If he cares about Gwen that much, then it should be no issue for Peter to stop the truck. If he yeah. cares that much about making Gwen's speech. What? No, the what? I don't. I'm talking about making Gwen's speech. I'm talking about uh, Gwen's speech being. Okay, well, whatever. Made in... Attending the graduation. Whatever. But that's not what. That's not the point I'm making. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about her being in a clear state of mind without having to panic about Peter. Both points you're okay, making well, have nothing okay. to do well, with that, him so... making it there. Him making it there isn't really part of what I'm saying. I don't. I never mentioned him getting there in time. I don't think that's something that he really cares all that much about. The man's concern right now is in part I think of the fact that Peter's not there. Wait, what did you say? That's what I'm saying. 
I'm saying Gwen's concern is in part that Peter is not there at the graduation. Yeah, and then he says, sorry, I'm running a bit late. I got stuck in some traffic. And okay, so why, why were you laughing about what I just said? Well, because you 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 made a complete straw man. You were talking about him making the graduation. That wasn't a straw man. I'm just it was. I'm Jesus Christ. Let me finish what I'm. Uh, Did my I call you anything that resembled a straw man? Yeah, you straw man. My what? position. Yes. Now let me please what finish. Did I, what, what did I Jesus Christ. Man? Let how, me finish what I'm saying. I was trying to explain, but you didn't let me. <laughs> so, okay. Well, I wasn't trying to. Oh my God. Let me all. explain. You <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so. The thing is, I said, Peter would want her to be in a clear state of mind before making her speech. And then you said, I don't think Peter would care about making it to the, uh, to, uh, to the graduation at that point. That's not what I if, said. I, uh, sorry, you said uh, if he there really does care about making it to, the, to her speech, yeah. he would, uh, he would, he would uh, try to stop the truck. Right, right. I'm not yeah. talking about him making it to, it to her speech because that's never been my point. I don't think he really cares all that much uh, about making it to her speech more so than he cares about her making her speech in a way uh, where she doesn't have to worry about him. She, because she, he doesn't want her to worry about him like ever because of the situation that her father put him in. Where she, he uh, he keeps thinking about, oh my god, I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, being, uh, I'm not, not being good for her. Which he literally says in the next scene when they're, the, 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 they're going to have dinner. He says, I'm no good for... Uh, no... Uh, no, I think he says that in the Tasm one actually. Uh, to and me, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm no good for her. But anyway, point being, uh, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't want to be a burden to her in any way because of his. Uh, uh, just because of his identity, which is a burden that was uh, put on him. Well, not put on him uh, from her father, but uh, that is uh, harder to deal with because of her father because he died uh, because of him. Uh, and so I think he would be like, okay, I want to calm her down, and then I'm gonna get back to dealing with this. And he's trying to deal with both, and he's trying to uh, trying to balance both. All right, let's move on. Uh, okay. Okay. Um. So I guess we'll uh, we'll talk about the Fury assassination attempt. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, because um, very yeah, open. So I just stuff. yeah, I I just want to say about this whole thing. Um, so that that whole entire scene that has like three times or four times the problems that are present here. Uh, it's pretty bad. I think we need to put up a watch together for this. All right. Yeah. Uh, That's fine. Cause like this is this is like straight one of the these are the worst assassins ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a ghost. <laughs> All right, so um, initial problem uh, with this uh, is the um, is the the choice of when they decided to go after him. Um, so they decided to to go after him when he's in his car um, and that is the most safe that Nick Fury is at any point um, they they don't take him into the Triskelion like they did with Captain America um, and no they just let him go to his uh, go to his car they don't tail him until he goes to like his home or something like that uh, they do they do not that they decide to uh, they decide to crash into him uh, publicly in the middle of the city with uh, and, and you know dress up as fake DC cops um, and they, course. yeah, and they, they try to shoot bullets at it, even though they should know this car can, uh, resist all of that. Um, and it has defensive measures. So they're going to, basically they're going to be wasting men. In fact, they do waste men in the sequence. Um, it's really stupid, like from the premise of it, at least what, uh, Rhino and his men are doing in, uh, in that truck chase, like it makes sense what they're trying to do. They're trying to get very valuable material um either to to help them get rich either to help them with uh, uh create like i don't know uh dangerous weaponry whatever like at least they're they, what they're doing makes sense their plan makes sense what here makes sense about what their plan is uh what hydra's plan is nothing 
<laughs> exactly. Um, so do you agree like that? That's like bad. Yeah, I, I agree. This this scene is. Um, I agree. This scene doesn't work. In fact, with the Winter Soldier showing up, it should have been like something that would have happened right from the beginning. I mean, yeah, if they were gonna use him. I mean, the fact that they attacked him in this car. I mean, I never took that as like they didn't like. I'm, I'm trying to find a way to work this out. I mean, I just think it was just like a, a little measure of protection. Nick Fury uh, kept for himself in case of any like. Um, in case of any like uh, attempts to attack him, because uh, I I don't I don't I don't want to like give this um, scene any leeway because I do get your point. Um, I I don't think the Hydra agents knew that his car was that reinforced. I don't see well, why they wouldn't know. Yeah, like, if they don't know, Hydra's it just makes them shield. dumber. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. And I also want to mention like uh, they didn't have to do this in his car. They could have done this at the Triskelion. No, no, I agree. They could have done this at any point that's not in public eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which should have been way smarter, especially because this car can fly, as he says, a uh, vertical takeoff. Oh, yeah, it's just and the, he doesn't his... use it. No, he, yeah, well, he says that it's uh, it's uh, not working. Uh, well, I, I, so, yeah, I should clarify. He doesn't use it earlier, like when he's in this situation here. Oh, yeah, he doesn't try to use it earlier, which is yeah. dumb. But, uh, yeah, just the fact that he, mm -hmm. he has it and it doesn't work makes it that it ultimately it wouldn't change anything, like how that scene turns out, but he should have tried to use it earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, while well, he shoots out worse. through the window... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, while he shoots out his guns through, the, through like, the driver's shield window, uh, it's funny how, like, the cops behind him, like, don't try to, like, work their way around the car to try and flank him. Or at least... Because um, um, I know... Um, if that makes sense... I guess if they had more of those things that can bash the windows, uh, that they could have uh, well, like, I mean, fucked Fury over by just doing it through like the right side and the left side. You know, they they shouldn't even have to do that if the if Shield has lightsabers that can cut through the car. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess I guess we'd have to assume that only Fury has that, but that would be weird. That would be, yeah. Well, um, and we, you know, know if you Pierce have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as canon, we know that uh, it's not only Fury who has it, <laughs> because they do use that in Season 2. Though, a version that makes a lot more sense, but yeah. <laughs> Always bringing up Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes, obviously. So, um, windows open, so many people are around him. Like, no one was shooting him that whole time. Exactly, yeah, like, no one was yeah, trying to All these people are stupid. Right there, yeah. Yeah, when he says full acceleration, he should just say vertical takeoff. Mm hmm. Um. Okay, so that's the first part of it. Gets worse, unfortunately. The bucket yeah, part of it? Those. <laughs> those uh, sorry, go ahead, Marcus. <laughs> oh, no, I was just making a joke that uh, the bucket part gets worse. Uh, but what were you going to say, Matt? Uh, Medica? Yeah, because those of all arm, unregistered cops, aka Hydra agents, have very bad stormtrooper aim when they get a good enough view mm -hmm. of his um, driver window. Yeah, it's pretty funny. And yeah, like so sure. many people are watching this, so many people are seeing this happen. So, mm -hmm. this this would by, um, you know, this would by like the fucking Triskelion or whoever like. They can expose us to like right in their asses. Oh shit! All right, there we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right luckily, there. they're all yeah. just missing. Mm -hmm. Just missing. They're, they're moving simultaneously. And he's not doing. Like... That guy that was just next to him didn't shoot at all. Um Jesus. So right here, real lucky that he has flimpy aim, doesn't hit his hands, doesn't hit uh, his arms or shoulders, none of that. Yeah. But then Oh god. It's lagging on my end. Look at that. 
out in the open mid oh, <laughs> shit there we go all right he's out oh my god why does he keep moving back and forth um There we go. Okay. So this guy, he's supposed to be a ghost story. He's just out in the open like a fucking moron. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, he's... the thing is, like, let's say they wanted to uh, make it seem like it wasn't, it was just an assassin that was sent by someone else and not think it was like, oh, it's Hydra, you know? Right. All you have At least to change do... the uniform. Well, yeah, that too. But, like, <laughs> you send uh, Bucky. And then you have him uh, assassinate, make a show of it, to be like, oh shit, it's an assassin sent by, uh, I don't know, fucking Russian spies or whatever the fuck. Uh, mm -hmm. And then he he, he goes back to being a ghost story. You just, that's the only time you use him in the film. And then, because like, and then, uh, because all they know is that he's a legend from what Nat says. Uh, he's wearing, he, is he wearing his mask in the scene? Yes, he is. Yes, yes. Yeah, so like they can't even identify him properly. So if they had done that, it would have been so much better than just having him out at the, like the last moment of the fucking car chase. It's so weird. Mhm. Mm and uh, the disc bomb that he uses. Um, well, there's your first tentacle blade. Oh yeah, I Didn't never used use that, that earlier. Again, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, really lucky for Fury that he just walks to him instead of just shooting or throwing a bomb or anything like that because you want to take out the target immediately and escape he's also just walking too like you want to run take him out get out of here uh, taskmaster does that in black widow too <laughs> and fury just somehow like here i'll show you in a moment so he look at that it's steaming all over he burns he somehow burned through it uh without burning himself or anything he crawled into it without you know the sides of that burning him either i guess i don't know um it's really weird this whole lightsaber thing and they're yeah, just like oh he escaped the amount of time it to take to cut a hole that deep that would take an immense amount of time so it's it's definitely like a big glaring issue about this movie is just like you know a character can just like conveniently escape because the plot says so well the thing is yep. it's not like it should because it's not like it was established that that's how it works the issue is it's so overpowered that you're just thinking okay why the shit yeah, never I mean. use it like why the why didn't fuck? he use that like earlier why yeah the, the, oh i didn't even mention how stupid nick fury's plan is uh <laughs> why is he driving out in the open where they can find him in a, in a vehicle where he's easily traceable not even using the impersonation tech, mind you. Oh yeah, the impersonation tech is uh, quite something for this <laughs> film. <laughs> yeah, you could look like David Hasselhoff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he also has a talking car, it'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Just this whole sequence, this is terrible. Like this you you understand this is worse than the, the truck thing in uh Tasm two, right? This is way worse. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, because my, my feelings towards the truck scene, uh, like, because when I watched this scene at first, uh, it's just like with a lot of people, I didn't mind it. I thought, like, you know, you see this as like a pretty technically well, well staged, like action scene, action chase scene. So it was good to give Nick Fury something to do. But yeah, the way you pulled out the lightsaber uh, issue there and, uh, you know, just the assassination attempt, the fashion that Hydro pulls to try to kill Nick Fury. Yeah, it doesn't work, though. I don't know, man. I don't know where I would stand. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say... Yeah, I would just say, like, just... Suggest, like, just from my own view, I think... For me, the uh, the, the truck scene in The Maze Spider-Man 2 is worse, but I can see why this is a huge Why problem. was that? I mean, well... Just, just how I would picture Spider-Man when he's... It's just the simple basics. It's just how, how, how I would picture Spider-Man, like, uh, doing his day-to-day -day role, uh, just saving people. Like, he lets a lot of people die in that the, that whole chase scene, and I just find that very idiotic of Spider-Man. It's something that I would Which, not picture Spider-Man. as opposed to 
as opposed to getting your most uh, uh, important assassin exposed to the public, as opposed to um, failing to kill somebody they should have easily been able to kill. And this especially has more consequences on the overall plot. Like, this is... Uh, this allows everything to happen. Oh, yeah, the, the, the truck scene in uh, you know? Tasm Chiu, it really does not affect the plot pretty much at all. Yeah, it's it only like... establishes Peter's state of mind with uh, Captain Stacy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, I will agree there. Like, the whole Tasm 2 scene, it's treated like a Saturday morning cartoon. It doesn't really affect, like, long-term plot effect, like long -term plot elements of the movie until mm -hmm. Lexi just comes back as a rhino. Um, okay, I can, right. I can agree with you there that this is a this is a pretty damaging yeah. scene for, for the Winter Soldier. Okay, um, so I guess in that case, if we agree that one was worse. Um, next for, for Tasm 2... Yeah, what are next like just next problem, cap. it could be anything. Yeah. Oh, like it could be character, uh, plot. I mean, uh, issues I have with it. Yes. So yeah, for my notes. Um, because there were a lot of issues in that whole truck scene um, that we kind of like went back and forth. Um, Well, I mean, sorry it takes so long. Um, I mean, That's I did right. have issues with uh, with with Electro. I mean, I still do. Um, um, we can talk about that. Yeah, I mean, in it that he's underdeveloped, and you know, Max Dillon is treated like you know your stereotypical New York character. And uh, I believe Marcus, you touch both you, um, SK and Marcus, you touch on the fact that Oscorp like, um, um, you know, handles uh, people very. They, they handle people who work under them pretty badly. Um, but the fact that the yeah. movie establishes that uh, Max designed the power grids that are, it's pretty much like state-of-the-art technology for Oscorp. Like, yes. we're talking like sure, it powers yeah. up the whole city. It powers up yes, the yeah, entire city. Yes, design powers the entire city, yeah. Yeah, so I don't understand why, Ma why Max still works at Oscorp if Oscorp would discredit him for his work. So, so he's trying to um, get recognition. Uh, we don't even yeah. know if he's trying to apply for a different job. That's um, like he could potentially be trying to work somewhere else. But uh, let's say he isn't. Uh, we know that Oscorp is like one of the biggest companies in like the world. It's the leading uh, scientific, um, uh, scientific advancement place for like pretty much everything that you can think of in terms of because like the now they control the energy of the entire city uh they were also the leading cross-species genetics they had the leading expert in reptiles uh which was kurt connors they have a lot of expertise so working in a place like oscorp is definitely a thing that could uh be useful for you just in experience even if max is being mistreated i could see him uh wanting to continue there simply to um uh, to like not give up this well yeah that's true but not give up this <laughs> opportunity uh in his life which is an opportunity that he wouldn't get again uh and also you know if he quits uh, let's say uh and uh he he is asked what he he did for uh for oscorp let's say he says in an interview like oh i built the power grid and they're like yeah no you didn't uh because you know he's works at a very low uh uh, tier job pretty much in uh, Oscorp, so I think he, w he was trying to like slowly but surely climb the ranks, which is why he's always trying to you know get more recognition, which is also you know supreme character for him because he, he is a character who wants more. Um, no, he just wants more pretty much uh, for himself. He wants to be recognized. He wants to be and viewed as someone also, that's valuable. Yeah, I, uh, I also want to mention real quick. Um, even if like he, these people are mistreating him, like they're dicks to him, it's like okay, um, I'm still getting my money, so. Uh, yeah, I'll take much. that, and it'd be one thing if he knows that the mistreatment is like, basically, it's it's physical or it's like they're they're doing they're making him do things that could get him killed. Um, he did, that doesn't happen to him yet, so it's not like it would be any danger to him if he were to continue. It'd be one thing if they've established that that would be questionable a little bit. Uh, I will also but... say though, uh, the fact he uh he because he, he asks about his grids, it's in the same day where he becomes Electro. That is uh, true. Yeah, so let's say when he finds out the truth about his grids, it was going to be his last day 
it doesn't matter because it becomes Electro anyway, so we don't know he was going to quit or not. Yeah, we don't know what he was planning that night. Yeah. Because the night didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, he, he became Electro, and yeah, that fucked over anything he could have had I don't planned. Recall, I don't recall, uh, I mean, um, if it's adding on to my issues with Electro, I don't recall Max wanting to quit Oscorp. Yeah, that's what you said. You said, why doesn't he want to quit? And we're like, why, uh, we're, we're responding to that issue. Oh, right, right. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I just, um, yeah, it's just like, I don't really picture him and, you know, the movie's trying to sound up as like an intelligent engineer of sorts, even though he played, uh, even though his character is written to be all schizophrenic, like with... Yeah, he has mental issues, issues but uh, mentally unstable people can also be really smart and uh, study it. Yeah, I don't think that's a contradiction. Are. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. fine. Uh, he, he does have uh, mental issues, but that doesn't negate how smart he is. Uh, those can work together. Uh, I mean, yeah, well, fucking, well, if you look at Van Gogh, he was clearly not well in the, his head, uh, but he was a genius as well, so I don't know. don't really see it as I I mean, I wouldn't know about much about Van Gogh's personal life, but, you know, he was a damn good artist. I mean, he cut off his own ear. Uh, yeah. <gasps> there's quite a bit that he did uh, that uh, you think, huh, maybe this is not the most mentally unstable person. <laughs> So right, yeah, right. my point is, I don't think it's uh, all, uh, out of the realm of possibility that for someone to be smart and also uh, uh, have the personality that Max has and, you know, the, the mental issues that he does. Uh, which is also, I think, makes sense for Oscorp to hire someone like that, that they can just exploit because he's seen as pathetic, but he isn't actually. But, you know, nobody appreciates him because he seems path pathetic as opposed to how he actually acts. Uh I don't know, I think it makes sense for Oscorp to do everything they do with Max. That is the Oscorp way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love Dane the Hunt in this film. <laughs> yeah. No, I do too. I like Dane, like, okay. Oh, you do? Because most people for... who don't like the film usually say that Dane the Hunt is bad. I really no, because like I, I, liked, I liked Dane the Hunt um, a lot from Chronicle, and um, it, was, it, it was exciting to see him as Harry Osborne. I mean, you should watch uh, a... Cure for Wellness. He's the main actor in that. He's great. It's a fantastic film. Well, yeah, I've also seen Valerian. He's also the lead in that movie, but that movie's not particularly good. Yeah, I've heard it's not great, yeah. <laughs> no, it's pretty stupid. Um, um so... Where was I? Oh, Did yeah, you yeah. have another issue? Um... Well, I just... Okay, if they, if they want to go with the approach that Max is, like, misunderstood and he's treated like shit by Oscorp, they... It's for us to get us to sympathize with a tragic villain. That's fine. Mm -hmm. It's just like how it's executed. It, I'm not sure what tone they try to go for because um, it wants to be legit. Like he has issues, but at some time it's, it's playing for comedy. Uh, like that when, when would you cite as a moment where it's played for comedy like that? Oh, uh, the moment where he is uh, lighting up his Spider-Man shrine and the cutaway with him and Smite. Uh, I think that's kind of the point, though. the The tragedy of of it all is that he's seen as this joke um, that people don't take seriously, um, I, and that's yeah, why like, he's the just thing is, such a loser. In the fine, film. I never took it as uh, a joke. More so, being like, see, this uh, he's a very mentally unstable person, and this is what happens when he starts this uh, uh, codependent relationship with uh, someone who doesn't really know him. I guess I th I think the term is parasocial, right? Uh, and, yeah, uh, well, I I guess that's kind of the point because to us it's funny, and to people that are around him, they like laugh at him or mock him, um, and that kind of drives the yeah. But then I guess the overall we actually get to know more life. of him. I don't think retroactively it's as funny. Uh, I think it's more tragic, adding adding to to his character, uh, to be like, mm -hmm. oh shit, we laughed at him, and you know, as uh, the same way that people uh, laughed at him, but he he deserved better, and that's the tragedy of it all. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think, like, there are quite a few goofy moments in this film. Like, when he just, you know, says, don't you know I'm Electro? But, like, I think <laughs> the actual um, character writing for Electro in terms of his um, issues and uh, how it's dealt with, it's dealt with pretty t consistently, tonally. I mean, yeah, I mean, if they if this movie wants to push forward for, like, a fun, lighthearted approach to Spider-Man um, as opposed to the first Amazing Spider-Man, I mean, 
I that's mean, fine. I no, I'd say this film is kind of a middle ground because it is. It has a lot of hilarious moments. I was when I was rewatching it today with a thought. We, we have tons of fun with this film, uh, but the, it does have a kind of dark tone with a lot of it, with how uh, with the tragedy not only of um, uh, not only of uh, Max but also Harry and uh, Gwen's death and all that. I think it's that's all played pretty straight without uh, uh, undercutting it by having jokes, which is you know. The usual shit that you usually see, like, in uh, newer MCU films, I guess. I mean, are you well? Because, you know, I, I have issues with the movie's tone in places, because... Such as? Um, well, I mean, with Max's character and, you know... Oh, you already... Uh, with Max's character and... Uh, um, sorry, I'm at a loss of words. Uh, this, is just, this is already so far a pretty long live stream. Um... Um, like, you know, my main issue with, with the tone is just like, if this is the kind of tone they wanted, they wanted to do, it, it should have been like executed in the first place with the first Amazing Spider-Man because, you know, going from the dark, realistic, um, edgy approach with Spider-Man from the first movie and going to this. You really think it's, it feels, uh, edgy? Oh. I don't think the first one was edgy. I yeah, think they were I, trying to be I think that's a, a different well, word. That's like edgy is what I would describe Zack Snyder. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't describe. It, so. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't mean like Zack Snyder, but I mean like in its own edge, um, <laughs> which I don't think the movie's that edgy at all. Um, which is, which again, it's not really like. Um, right, so I'm confused about your point. So you're saying that the first film is uh, dark and realistic and edgy, and the second one is uh, too not too unrealistic and too. Uh, the th tone is too light when compared to. Desmond. Well, it, it's it, it's not an issue of what tone I prefer. It's just like I'm looking at these films as a whole. It's just like they're very schizophrenic movies when you blend them together. I don't think um, so. As, as I, actually, after I finished watching today with thought, is like these films are quite uh, they're different in tone. Uh, not like uh, it's super different, but they're different. Um. But they still work together as a, like a complete piece. Like every like the shit that's set up in Tazam One is played off in Tazam Two. Uh, I don't uh, I don't see how it's schizophrenic in that way. Uh, because like one film can have a one tone and one film can have another. Where, as like a character changes off screen, you can have uh, them you know have those different uh, emotional um, different types of emotions shown in shown in scenes. But like I still would say, this film is, uh, deals with quite a, lo a lot of uh, very dark and heavy stuff, uh, and you know, uh, the tone doesn't just because like it can be I guess different tonally from the first film. I don't see how that's an issue, especially when the tone of the second film is consistent in like uh, when you have something like when Peter's talking about his parents to Aunt May, and you know she's explaining everything to him. That's a scene that's like played really straight. There are no jokes in that. Um, and so no, like, no, I, I, I don't really under, yeah, I don't really understand how uh just like the first film being more dark I guess but I, I don't know I'd say the second one is darker considering uh Gwen's death uh and uh, Max's tragedy I don't know I, maybe that's just me I guess um, I, I don't I don't really understand what your uh, issue would be with the the tone because I don't think it strays too far to con consider it schizophrenic the way you said it well it just it just fit well, it just feels very calculated and manipulative. Like, what? and all, all forms of media are manipulative, but it's manipulative in a way where I kind of don't really get a sense of identity between the Amazing Spider-Man films because with Raimi's, I mean, the Raimi films have their own issues with tone, but uh, Sam Raimi comes off as a guy who romanticizes in class, excuse me, uh, who romanticizes in classic Spider-Man. Uh, and he wanted to owe a lot more to like the classic Spider-Man comics, which is why the Raimi films um, appear what uh, appear how they are when we look at them. Um, here is just like, I mean, yeah, the movie tries to play for dark stuff, especially with Norman's death, Norman Osborn's death, for example. But I never really got the sense of uh, like, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble articulating this. I never got the sense of any sort of like tone is trying to set it comes off pretty funny and campy especially with uh um the actor's name his performance as norman in his one scene it just comes off pretty hammy 
And I wasn't really sure what I'm supposed to feel out of this. Wait, really? That's what you got yeah, from his performance? Because I... That's seen to play pretty straight. Wait, whose performance? Uh, Norman's. Chris Cooper as Norman Osborn. I don't understand uh, what you're Um... I, yeah, I, I don't I understand. Don't how How is he... Uh, like a goofy or uh, however you would describe it. I don't well, the way they coded him, like he's okay. Obviously, they want to like foreshadow Harry's illness, but Not for he just comes so. off. Yeah, he just he just comes off as like a Hammer villain, like something out of a Hammer horror movie. I but the long nails. And the oh, I guess so can you his visuals that? are way too uh, goofy for you to take him seriously. Yeah, and the performance, especially some of the delivery of his lines, such uh, as, strikes me very odd. Because um, for, like for me, he... that scene is—I uh, I don't really have an issue with it. I think this film blends the goofy aspects with the seriousness quite well. Uh, like Max is some—he uh, from his at Times Square, he's like, uh, "Now it's my birthday. It's time for me to light my candles." And it's like that is a hilarious line, but that doesn't take away from the stakes of the scene uh, because of how. Uh, because we know Max's power, so I, I think you can have both. And then when you have something that looks pretty, uh, I guess it can look kind of goofy, but it's the same way where, like, I don't think just because Norman's co uh, costume looks goofy in Spider-Man 1, that means that his death, the impact of his death uh, at the end of Spider-Man 1, is all that, uh, like, hindered by it. Um, like, you can still have uh, some... Something like that, which internally makes sense. Uh, his illness is consistent. Uh, and also adding it to, uh, like, it can seem uh, goofy, but to the way it's played is what it matters most. And it's played pretty straight. Uh, and I don't think Norman's delivery is at any point uh, played to a way where it seems goofy or uh, comedic. Uh, Norman, uh, he uh, the way he says it is, like, very serious. Uh, and you can tell a lot of emotion from his voice about how, you know, he's disappointed in Harry because Harry, you know, hasn't done a, a lot with his life. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can tell quite a bit about their history with the way they talk to each other. Obviously, you know, uh, Harry exposits a bit of that, but uh, I don't know. I don't I don't really understand the issue of what you're trying to say exactly. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, these movies, you know, because obviously they made these movies so Sony could keep the rights, but in in their storytelling attempts, it they it doesn't really it, it doesn't really resonate with me. Uh, I mean, sure, life. but that I think I mean it's fine if it doesn't resonate with you, but I think tonally to say that it, it is uh, out of place just because uh, he looks like with the long nails, he looks too goofy for you. I don't think that's fair. I mean, okay, that's fine if you, if you find that unfair. It's just like it, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a tonal disconnect I have with uh, with these movies, especially with the second one. Um, but you know, I do plan to like flesh out my issues with um, with uh, the Amazing Spider-Man for future videos. Um, but right now, I'm just kind of like ballparking. But um, my other issue, if, if we can go on to. Um, um, other criticism about the movie um uh, i just i really don't like how the movies try to emphasize on peter parker's parents um I, it's an angle wow. i was never like a, fully approved of well it's just like you know it like it, it just undermines um you know uncle ben and may in a way where like despite not having his parents around like peter's lived a good life under ben and and May's care. Yeah, as like, he says like, to Aunt May and yeah, to which, Uncle Ben. How does, does that undermine like them, that. though? It's not undermined. He had has lived a good life, but he wants to know more about his parents. So would I, if I was adopted. I wouldn't want to know more about my birth parents as well, if I had, if I knew nothing. It's just the kind of thing where people were curious about that, especially with something uh, so mysterious surrounding his parents' death, such as a plane, uh, plane crash where his dad just... Uh, his dad's body disappeared as well um and he was played kind of as a traitor and kurt connors as well from tasm one he thinks that uh he, he was angry at uh richard parker which is why he never visited so it's the kind of thing where i think that uh from peter's perspective him wanting to know more about his parents why would that be an issue 
like he, he Peter does appreciate his uh, uncle and his aunt as shown in the film multiple times such as when he literally says in the first film um, you, you're pretty great, great dad you know to Uncle Ben uh, and when Aunt May starts crying and tells him to uh, he also points out how she's uh, how she is enough for him it's just that you know he needs to know this it's just something that he wants to know I, I don't see how that undermines it I think it more reinforces the idea of how great parents they are but it's something that Peter has to deal with to, uh, I guess, uh, not move on, I guess, but uh, more to be more complete with knowing uh, about like all his uh, uh, all his parents' past and history, because of how they just abandoned him, and he, you know, as opposed to him tr uh, feeling unloved by about why they abandoned him, he finds out why they did it, and it's he, you know he feels fulfilled. It's like so they did this to protect me, which I think is quite meaningful. I mean, like, yeah, Oscorp is bad, but we know Oscorp is bad from the beginning. Okay, we know that... Oscorp is, is malevolent. What does that change, though? Yeah, that I'm doesn't curious. change anything of what I said. The point. Well, the... I mean, <laughs> you're it, saying it, that it undermines the uh, the relationship with the uh, with Uncle Ben and Aunt May. I just pointed out how it's actually uh, stronger because it shows that he he loves them uh, a lot to the point where nothing could take them away from them. To the point where he says to Aunt May, "You're more than enough." Um, but he also needs to know because it it's his parents, it's his past. It's something that he needs to know to be able to move on. Like I don't see how you could have uh like I don't see how you could say that. And then like if if you say some someone in real life, someone is adopted, and they want to know about their birth parents, that means that they uh, undermine their adoptive parents. Because I think that's quite diminutive. Because you can just want to know because you're blood related. It's the kind of thing that just an urge we have to learn about our past and our uh, where we come from. Uh, but it doesn't mean that, you know, the person who raised you isn't the person who raised you. They're still, like, your parents, quote-unquote. So, I, I really I mean, don't yeah, my blood, they are my they are my parents, but I'd rather, like, I'd rather take account of the people who have been in my life for so long that I wouldn't want to just, like, focus on pursuing people that never existed in my life. And they did like exist, and he wants to know why they stopped existing, why they abandoned him. He needs to know. If my parents abandoned me, I would definitely well, keep bugging my adoptive he's parents. Put them in good faith. Like, yeah, he, 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 for everything he remembers about his dad is good. The last thing his dad said was, be good. The last thing he said to him. Like, you'd think potentially that uh, Peter would be someone to focus uh, on that aspect and be like, so my parents really loved me, so why would they abandon me? That's the kind of thing he can't wrap his mind around. And he knows his, uh, that Aunt May. Uh, is hiding something because of how she always averts her eyes, uh, which she points out in that scene. Like, he still loves Aunt May and Uncle Ben a lot. A lot, a lot. He says to Uncle, uh, Uncle Ben that you are a pretty great dad, you know. Like, I don't understand how this is undermining it. It's confirmed. The the film itself confirms that he does really care about Uncle Ben and Aunt May. Like, you can have both. Yeah, I have my own issues with 2001, but, you know. Okay, that, I just think like yeah. this is this is like overly emphasized, and it's again crowded on top of so much shit that's going on in this movie. Okay, that that you're straying from the main point. I'm I've just highlighted a lot of counters to why it's not an issue that it's uh, highlighted so much in Peter's character because it doesn't undermine that relationship. So okay, but you're just moving the goalposts no, no, to no, say no. that now the film is too crowded, which y y we can get you afterwards. But I I want to hear what you have to say about that aspect alone because that's what we're arguing. No, I mean, that's fine. You feel that way. I mean, okay. Well, right now, I, I've i got nothing to add, really, because you're going to come off with very liberal points that the film makes, which, you know, obviously, that's fine. You feel that way. I mean, I got nothing to say about that for a moment. So the film contradicts uh, your entire point, but you're just going to say, I don't well, have a con uh, you don't have anything to say about that. Like, the film establishes the thing you wanted to establish, and you, you just like, okay, uh, uh, that's still an issue. We can't just move on from that. You're just, uh, you're just yeah. ignoring what the film is trying to establish. No, no, no. I'm not, dude. I'm not ignoring what you said. That's fine if you like it, because you're definitely. No, I didn't say I like it. I said that the what the film is doing. I never said what my feelings towards that scene are. Like, uh, yeah, I love that scene. Good, but that's not the point. The point is that what you're asking for for the film to not undermine the relationship he had with his uncle and his aunt is what happens in the film. The film does not undermine it because of how much he is shown to love his uncle and his aunt. Well, yeah, because it's in a similar fashion that I felt about Man of Steel, how 
just to move on to a different film, if I could use for reference, uh, how sure. Clark Kent pursues his uh, origin and undermines the fact that he's lived like a humble life in Smallville um, under good care by um, Jonathan Kent and Martha Kent. Um, so it's yeah. not as bad as Man of Steel. Yeah, but... Man of Steel uh, has him, you, you, well, the, the DC universe has him use the man, the name uh, Kal-El and doing shit uh, like that, mm -hmm. which is retarded. And he, him saying he's from mm -hmm. Krypton as opposed to saying he's from Earth, which I think is retarded. But that and yeah. that does undermine the care he has had with uh, his uh, adoptive parents. Uh, be because it's just like, no, I come from uh, Krypton or whatever. But in Tasm, it, it's, they literally say... Uh, they literally have Peter say, you're a pretty great dad, you know, to Uncle Ben. They have uh, Uncle Ben being a very paternal figure and trying to take care of them. And it made the same, trying to be enough for Peter. And he does say, you are enough, you're more than enough. But I, I need to know because it's his past. Peter is uh, motivated to find out about what happened to his parents because of everything surrounding, um, not only everything surrounding Oscorp, but everything going on in his life to a point where he's lost everything. Like, he's... If, from every everything he has um everything he has experienced that he remembers the first thing he remembers is being abandoned by his parents and then he uh, is about and then uh, his best friend ab abandons him which you know not his best friend's fault but you know peter is abandoned by uh by harry in a way which peter already uh, can, uh, finds it hard to deal with and then Gwen is going to leave to England and that's why he's motivated at that point so much it's like why did you abandon me like people keep leaving me I, I just want to find out why did my parents leave me like why why am I this person that keeps losing everyone I care about well, you know he also lost you know, his uncle in the last film well yeah you, know, you gotta have the hairy daddy issues to parallel with Peter's but I mean Gwen's not abandoning Peter I never said about Harry and his daddy issues what are you talking about what I'm talking about is that uh, Harry, uh, is that uh, Peter lost Harry, uh, and from uh, Peter's perspective, he's trying to figure out why uh, did his parents leave him because that's the only thing he has left uh, to find out uh, to be like people keep abandoning me. Why did my parents abandon me? Like all I have left now is uh, Aunt May, and I love her and I want to take care of her, but I can't even uh, do that properly, which is what he finds out when she's he has to take. Uh, she says he has to take. She, she has to take two jobs to. Um, we keep we support him uh, going to college, and you know they talked earlier about their money struggles. Like he he can't he wants to be there for a person that really cares about him and that he really cares about, but he can't, and so he's trying to find out the, the last thing that he is able to think of at that moment is like, so my parents they left me. Why? I need to find out why. Uh, am I just unloved? Am I just a bad person? I need to find out why, and that's why he looks so hard into it, uh, and that's why he pushes it with Aunt May. But Aunt May is a great mother to him, to the point where he says yeah. exactly that. You are more than enough. Like, it's not undermining it when the film exactly points out, she, yes, she's a great mother to him. She's a great person. But he also wants to find out about his parents. Like, he, he, you're saying that the, uh, these two are uh, dichotomous, but I mean, they can obviously work together. And I don't, don't really understand how you can say that they can't or that they don't. I mean, well, yeah, Ame is a great mom, like a mother figure to Peter. So that's more than enough because yes. she's she's been with Peter. She's raised Peter her whole life. Yes. For that most of his life. Point. Yes, that is what the yeah. film points out. Yes. So I don't get why Peter has to, like, go on this. Well, Jesus Christ, change. have you not paid attention to what I just said? Well, well, yeah, well, I pay attention the, to the film, obviously, so... No, clearly you didn't. You the so film upset. literally has him, uh, when he's looking uh, into evidence about his parents, it, the film literally has him using a sticker note uh, to put it on Gwen's face and be like, do I have to lose you too? And it shows, oh shit, he's thinking about loss, the people he's lost. And he just wants to find out uh, about his parents, why he lost them. Because that's all he uh that's all he can do at that point that's all he can think of at that point it's like i need to find out my parents why did they leave me uh that doesn't like you want you to find out why you were abandoned by your parents doesn't mean that you uh don't love your adoptive parents any less we know he loves Aunt may and uncle ben and we've seen a lot of scenes of them talking together like in tasm one when he's like go to sleep and may go to sleep because he doesn't want her to worry about him but she keeps worrying and, you know, she says he, she can't sleep. And Peter tries to uh, uh, help Aunt May. And, help, and Aunt May co constantly helps him. That's, and Uncle Ben not, is a good paternal figure as well. Really and that he does point out by him saying, uh, you're a pretty great dad to Uncle Ben. How is this him thinking that he's not a good... Uh, uh, they're not good parents to him? 
I don't I don't understand I it. Don't, they aren't uh, dichotomous. So here's the thing. Um, I I'm not I'm not gonna be gone. Well, I have to take care of something real quick. I'll be like uh, 10, 15 minutes, but I'm just gonna have Jib for now because I think uh, he might. Have, I'll just, he'll just take my place for now. That's all. <laughs> all right. All right. I am back. Hello. 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 God, I mean, I need a map break so hard. But um, hello, Jeb. Welcome. Well, welcome. You're welcome um, yourself, Jeb. <laughs> yes. Of course. All right, well, this is your show, of course. But, um, so, okay. I agree how... Okay, I I do get where you're coming from, dude. But, you know, clearly you're obviously saying, like, a lot of things literally that are in the film. But I, I got no sense of death with what Peter's going through in terms of uh, his parents abandoning him. And, you know, quite frankly, like... It doesn't, it doesn't undermine the care that he's had in his whole life as much as Man of Steel does, but there's like, I don't know, it's just like, I wouldn't put, like, okay, I wouldn't really put much focus into people that never existed or occurred in my life when I would just, like, take account of the people who have been here my whole life, is what my issue is with... Um, well, I think you're weird strange. then, because I definitely would, if my parents had abandoned me. And it's not like they were never in his life. They were in his life. He used to love his parents. And, you know, his dad, la last thing he said to him is be good, which I think is like, you know, well, it, yeah. my dad, oh, oh. He, from my memory, he is a good person. So I, I'm, I'm going to want to find out why he would abandon me because that seems inconsistent with what I know of him, with what I remember of him. Uh, but I don't know anything about Richard Parker's character or the fact that. Well, I Peter's don't care. What? Oh, uh, well, oh, we do know the well. we do know that from Peter's perspective, he was a good person, and Peter must find out. Wait, why would he leave me if I do think he was a good person? Well, to add Jet two things. One, to be honest, I don't care what you would do. I care what Peter does, and in Peter's character, he's a very curious individual in the first place. That's why he's really into his science and such. Two, he still cares a lot about his father and his memory and family. So it's more likely to investigate, especially when he has loads of questions. And what was Marcus talking about? Oh, what we do know of Richard Parker was that he was this amazing scientist who really cared about Peter and had suddenly just left. And his last words were for Peter to be good. So, And then he dies in a plane crash. Yeah, and then we have uh, Uncle Ben trying to teach Peter of uh, Richard's morals when he, you know, does the responsibility speech in uh, the first film. And it's like, wow, uh, you know, my dad uh, thought that, but where is he to say that to me? Like, each, uh, Peter's high, uh, realizing how inconsistent Richard is and he wants to find out why is this, why did this happen? Why is he so inconsistent with how he is in my mind and how he is, uh, you know, how he is in my memory and how he acted towards me? So I guess the, the question is, what, what, what do you think the film should have done to have that not be an issue because otherwise we're going to arrive at it you know, going uh, in circles again. Well, if you're going to reinforce the idea that Oscorp was bad, because that's pretty much like the whole payoff to uh, the video message that Peter no. comes across in Richard Parker's. Um, that's not then, the payoff. No. That's not the payoff. Don't, then, don't, then don't fucking bring in the parents then. That's not that's the payoff. The but that's not the payoff. It's the whole... Um... Peter's character arc and accepting who he is because he's been so split between so, too many different things. He doesn't know who he is. He well, doesn't know how to keep... Different things too. I, 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 to be fair, you haven't... I'm going to be quite frank, you haven't really been paying attention to the film because there's an explicit scene where it establishes he finally knows yeah, well, uh, what he wants to do. He uses argument like, I didn't pay attention to the film. I've seen the film many times. It just it hasn't. It's never worked on me since I first saw the movie. Yeah, that's so that's what I'm saying. You're saying you're missing that's, evidence. I, I don't. Yeah, yeah, you're missing an explicit scene, which is why I'm saying you haven't paid attention effectively. Okay, there's what a dedicated scene. On? The um, when he does the bridge and speaks with Gwen, and when he goes to see Gwen in Oxford. That's him figuring out oh, yeah, finally when, when who he is. To see her in Oxford. He's like, I have no idea of anything of what I am and who I am, but I keep coming back to one thing, and then he doesn't say what that is because he's interrupted. Uh, but at, that's a point where he's a complete loss as, as to what he is and uh, what he's supposed to do and who he's supposed to be. 
like he says, uh, should I help him? But that could call, uh, but that could put him in more harm. You know, when he's talking about Harry, and it's the kind of thing where he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know who he wants to be, who he can be, and how what he can do with the the powers he has, uh, the abilities he has at this point. And he, what is why he breaks down to Aunt May. Okay, that that's fine. That's fine. That Peter is at a is at a loss between decisions of what he, whether he wants to help Harry or you know the fact that. What he's what he's heard so far in context of the whole Oxford scene about his parents. I mean, yeah, that's fine. You could uh, he'd be very confused and not understand, um, you know, not understand his parents in, in the greater context of things. But, you know, um, having trouble where I could um, like I, navigate this. I don't understand quite honestly your issue here, because every time a point is made that refutes a claim you've made. You seem to find a new issue, and I'm really quite confused. No, no, you no, said... it's not a new issue. It, this is still the same issue. It's just like there are factors that play into that issue. I'm not making a new uh, issue of why, it, why this doesn't work. Well, you said, for a start, that um, the payoff's just also called bad. That was wrong. You said that Peter wouldn't do this. That was wrong. You're finding smaller issues within a larger issue, and it's kind of like, you're it's like you're trying to uh, make stretches to see an issue when it seems there isn't one that you can find no it's not one i can find it's one that i found uh this is an issue that which i found on first viewing of the movie which is you know the overemphasis on his parents um and oh yeah i think uh marcus you cited um Uncle Ben's uh, responsibility speech. Yes. Um, that's that's one of my issues with how it undermines Uncle Ben, and especially Uncle Ben in that in that moment. It's just like the whole responsibility no. reprise. It does not um, undermine it. First off, if he's speaking it, doesn't it, come off, like, it doesn't come up like Uncle Ben is saying this. He's citing his father he as he said this. So, so let me. Okay, so if he's saying it, if he's preaching it, that means he believes in it, doesn't it? Well, it's not that with great power comes great no, responsibility. No, I don't. Just answer my question, it's yes or no. That, if he's preaching the that idea, does he believe in it? N no. Not at the what? moment after he dies, because he goes on a vendetta. What? To find no, I'm talking about Uncle Ben. When Uncle Ben preaches the idea, does he believe in it? That's that's what I'm saying, yeah. He does believe I'm, in it, I'm right? Saying, I'm saying he doesn't believe in it. What? So Uncle Ben doesn't believe in the exact same thing he preaches Peter? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you, dude. Um, yeah, I think, yeah. Okay, yes. so she when must. Uncle Ben does the responsibility speech, does Uncle Ben believe in it, what he's saying? Yes, he believes in it because, of course, um... Because Richard he's a good is... person, right? Because he's a good uh, parental well, not only figure. Not, I mean, they're relatives. Well, I Uncle don't care ben if they're relatives. The point is, it, Uncle Ben believes in it. J P uh, Uncle Ben is just appealing to uh, Peter's dad. Because Peter has been asking about his dad, because of everything that's been going on uh, since he found out the briefcase. But that doesn't mean that Uncle Ben doesn't believe in it. And not to mention, Uncle Ben believes in it so much that that's how he dies. He's trying to protect people, and then he gets shot by doing so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Protecting people from a, a burglar store robber where he has no context of what's going on, so he's going to He sees gun. someone... He, he Are sees you some, serious? Are Somebody you actually brain dead? Somebody stop No, that I'm not guy. brain dead, dude. No, you are. Right. I don't care. I need to, like, I need if to you're saying this that. real quick. This I need, I, hang on, hang on. I want to explain this real quick. So, if you're on the street, okay, and you, you see a guy running away suspiciously, uh, who's dressed suspiciously too, uh, who has a, who drops a gun when he trips, and before, hear, before that happens, you hear somebody stop that guy, what do you think the assumption is? No, and everything, uh, all that uh, Uncle Ben tries to do is to get the gun out. Like, he's because not, like, he... trying to kill uh, the dude. He just tries to get the gun out of Uncle his hands. Because... A very... Uncle Ben's a very spry dude. Like, he's a he's a big yeah. guy, but yeah. he's not very agile as the robber. Yes, but that doesn't matter. The point is, he puts himself on the line because if, it's his responsibility the... from his point of view. Because that's what he believes in. So much so that he preaches that same idea to Peter, like, the previous scene. Okay, so if you're, if you're reinforcing the... 
the point of responsibility of protecting people, yeah. then the whole truck chasing and Tasm 2 kind of like derails that whole message. It, we already Why went through we that. Yeah. I, I already I know, said how I believe that that because... doesn't do that because of uh, the context given. And if that is the case, and it's a character inconsistent with is inconsistent with Peter, but we're talking about Uncle Ben right now, and how uh, you said he's under his influence is undermined. You can keep moving goalposts. Like Uncle that ben doesn't relate to the point. Well, that okay, doesn't relate to the making. He just knows that someone needs to stop the robber. He doesn't know the whole fucking situation. But that doesn't matter. Yeah, that doesn't matter. It, he he knows someone needs to stop the robber, so he goes and tries to stop the robber. Wow. That tells you more about his character, that his first incident is get the gun out of the way, de-escalate. I mean, Don't let someone get hurt. Yeah, if you get the gun out, then the guy can, can't hurt anyone, whether he is, you know, uh, fucking just a normal guy who happens to be running around with the gun, or it's... Uh, or told if, to be, get stopped. Yeah, but, yeah, if, if you want to go by that retarded route. But if you think, well, yeah, he actually is a robber and he is carrying a gun, he is a danger. Well, if he stops him, then that's a good thing he's doing. He, Thomas uh, Wayne, well, Thomas Wayne and Batman v Superman thought the, the right thing was to punch the mugger. Yeah, but Thomas Batman. Wayne is dumb. I don't care about Thomas Wayne. I don't care about Batman v Superman. We're talking about yeah, the, I don't the Amazing Spider-Man. I don't care about Uncle Ben because this is fucking... This is fucking a cheap way to just kill him off. Ah, yes. Well, Uncle, 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 Uncle Ben well. dies by preaching, uh, by doing the exact same thing he was trying to teach Peter to uh, use his, uh, to be responsible with the, uh, his powers. If he has the ability to help someone, he has a, uh, the responsibility to do so, uh, which is what he, uh, Uncle Ben believes in, which is what Richard Parker believes in, Wait, and on. which is what Peter uh. ends up believing in uh, later on in the film after he saves uh, the, the kid from yeah, the from car. Yeah, from the lecture of Captain Stacy. Between vigilantism and heroism. So, I'm, we're jumping, but I want to mention this real quick. Uh, you bring up the comparison to BVS with Thomas Wayne with the gun. So, here's a massive what? difference. Uh, Thomas Wayne is distanced from him at the time, uh, and he doesn't really have a chance to grab it, whereas Uncle Ben does. So, that's not comparable. Yeah, Uncle Ben sees the, that the gun dropped and that he tries to get it first, but he doesn't because, you know, he's uh, not agile enough. Mm -hmm. But he still tries because, from his point of view, it's his responsibility to try to help people. And I'm just like, people do this in real world scenarios. Their first thing is go to the danger for those kind of people and resolve it. I I don't understand how this is cheap. This is literally within his character as repeatedly as established and it shows so much about him and why he's such an inspiration to peter and why peter decides to do what he does yeah he cares so much about uncle ben that he tries to uh, uh get revenge until he realizes that that's not what he his uncle would want him to do uh, but it takes him time because you know he is very uh bent on getting revenge because of how uh this version of peter is way more uh rash and abrasive than uh, other versions okay that's fine it just doesn't work it really uh, does not work I, okay whatever i don't fucking care anymore let's you move, on, move to on, on to point. let's soldier. move on to the winter soldier i can't debate this yeah let's go i'm gonna go grab a glass of water while you talk about the winter soldier <laughs> i'm just right. i'm mystified <laughs> all right so um with uh, the winter soldier um the next thing I want to mention is what Nick Fury does after uh, the assassination attempt. So he goes to Cap's apartment, of all places, that he knows is bugged, and he goes to tell him uh, that S.H.I.E.L.D. is compromised and say, Hey, uh, my, my wife kicked me out. Uh, I, 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 that's why I'm crashing here. I'm sorry. And it's like, that's one of the most suspicious things that you could be saying like in in that in that circumstance the fact that he went there to begin with is dumb because now you've put a you've put a target on cab's back you're telling him all this information um about your quote unquote wife which means you're clearly hiding something okay they're going to want to know what you're what's being hidden um potentially they might just kill captain america uh in the event that he tries to spread this information whatever he would have told him uh there's so many things that they could do and fury just doesn't account for this Basically, he almost got uh, his greatest soldier killed. So, there you go. There. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, yeah, I really like. It's pretty dumb at uh, the first place. It's not just dumb. It damages the character. Yeah, 
No, no. I mean, he's well, supposed he's to be this tactical genius, uh, and he just fails spectacularly. Nearly gets uh, Captain America killed. That's insane. How, how you have a bad luck? That's really irresponsible. <sighs> what? <laughs> how you have a bad luck? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm not gonna lie, so people uh, never make these arguments. <laughs> what just happened? Jeff said that so people wouldn't make these arguments. Oh god. <laughs> Alright, so Fucking that whole thing with, with Nick Fury, so so that's bad. What I wanna follow up with, what Cap does is he immediately trusts Sharon. When she could be part of Hydra, he he just trusts he just trusts her, just cause and has no confirmation from Fury that she was there, uh, she was sent there to protect him. Um, so that's dumb. What's even more dumb is that uh, he goes into the Triskelion where they can easily trap him. He doesn't go on the run or anything. He doesn't try to remain hidden. He just trusts Shield and he goes to the Triskelion despite being told not to trust Shield. And on top of that, what he tells Pierce is. Uh, Fury told me not to trust anybody. Like, that that defeats the purpose of, uh, don't trust anyone. Like, that that's one of the most suspicious things you could have said. Yeah, if I could add to that, I mean, if I could add to some perspective about Steve Rogers, uh, he's still sure. not learned about how the modern world works, so he's pretty naive and confused, as I would be. Like, even for me in that situation, I wouldn't know what the fuck's going on. So, I mean, it's just it's my takeaway uh, about that. What do you mean you wouldn't? Issue. Well, he, he would know what's going on because he was told. Well, yeah, I know. But if I'm, if I'm going to S.H.I.E.L.D. to tell, um, you know, whoever's in charge, whether it's Pierce or somebody, what happened, then I just, you know. Yeah, I don't trust him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. After he, after no, he no Fury to told him, him not to trust, uh, not to trust, mm -hmm. she, not to trust anybody, like he was, they attempted to kill him for that. They're trying to cover something up, clearly. Yeah. No, no, and I get you because Alexander Pierce uses the whole Lemurian star, uh, um, uh, briefing uh, that Nick Fury hired like the pirates to hijack the ship as a front to convince Cap that um, that Nick Fury was up to no good, and so. You know, yeah, I agree that C. Rogers should have said, like, don't trust anyone from what Nick Fury told him in his last words. Cause I think that is pretty stupid. But, I mean, it, it's, you know, it, it's what I can gather, man. Okay, so it's bad. Yeah. We can move on? All right. It's bad. All right, so next we have the elevator fight, which <laughs> is pretty disastrous. Um, so, first, you have the strike team. They try to, uh, they're not, they don't even have guns or anything, by the way. They just, and the reason for that is because they decided to go in close range. They decided to crowd a bunch of men in an elevator, uh, to try to take down a super soldier, which, which has a glass, which has glass walls, by the way. Um, this is an awful idea <laughs> on every level. Uh, one kick and you're out of the window. It's like one of the worst ways you can try to restrain him. Um, the thing is, yeah, they show that, that they do have, Sorry, because they send a strike team to his level after yeah. all is said and done. So they could just send yeah. a strike team because I think they would be able to monitor to what level the elevator would be going. Uh, exactly. To, or just, just send lock, a strike team. And or lock down him. the bridge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, hey, they do try, though. <laughs> they, that's the thing. They try to lock down the bridge, and but they take forever to do that. And it, they, it, literally, after he falls down... Um, he, well, firstly, uh, what's his name, Sitwell, he stares for a bit, and then after he gets up and starts running, and he says, you kidding me? Uh, he's headed for the garage, locked down the bridge. So Cap ran to the garage, put on his helmet, started his motorcycle, um, drove it so fast that he could do this jump, and then go through the gate, like, at the last second, even though it should have shut, like, before he even got to the motorcycle. Yeah, the amount of time it took for Cap to um, flee out of Triskelion, that, that is enough time to just lock down everything. So it, it's weird that the bridge is still down 
after all mm-hmm. the amount of time and that and every wow. every time uh every time uh cap should have been caught um every time fury should have been caught or dead whatever uh mm-hmm. 20 million people are dead so that's just just to establish the consequences of these problems in comparison to uh what's been brought up for tasm 2 No, I, yeah, the stakes for uh, Winter Soldier are 20 million people die if any of the things that do work don't work. Yep. Quite a bit of it shouldn't work, so, you know, causes a bit, bit of issues. Oh, I I forgot some other stuff. Um, so, Caps in front of a Quinjet, they're shooting at him. They The bullets hit around him, but not at him. I guess they ha- the, the, the Quinjets have Stormtrooper aim, too. And then he he does he he throws the shield at the um, at the Quinjet. Uh, the physics for that shield are really weird, but you know what? Whatever, I'll I'll accept it. But then what I can't accept is the fact that after he takes it down, they don't send another Quinjet after him. Yeah, it's they do nothing. Uh, don't, don't they make him a public enemy after that scene? Correct. Yeah. yeah they, so if they if they hunt. did sh- uh, send a Quinjet, it wouldn't have been like uh, sh- showing their hand, pretty much. It'd be like, okay, so he is a traitor. We got gotta get him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that is pretty dumb. Uh, so I, I just to uh, continue because uh, there's even worse stuff. So, um, oh, I didn't even mention this. So uh, this leads us to him going back to the vending machine because he thought it was a good idea to put that very uh, important drive that Fury told him to keep, keep safe to not trust anybody with in a fucking vending machine. It's so stupid. Yeah, it's, it's like it's no, really yeah, bad. no fucking wonder that Black Widow was able to get it so easily. You put it in the worst spot possible. Couldn't he have um, just kept it in himself? Like I don't. Like, I was while rewatch. I was like, couldn't he have just keep stick it, in it his up pocket? his ass? Oh, even then, but just like, really, just put it in his pocket, and that's it. Like I don't really see exactly it. because people aren't at that point. They aren't uh, searching him or anything. They're trying to, um, to, to kill him. But if he has it with with himself, that means it's uh, much safer than just somewhere where people are gonna have access to it, and he just has no mm-hmm. way at all to know if they did get it or not when he wasn't there. Yeah, it's it's really bad. Um, <laughs> but going further, um, they go to the Apple Store. For some mm-hmm. reason, an Apple computer has this <laughs> program, this advanced program for Shield, to track. The the hostile malware wherever it, wherever it came from, I guess. Um, because Apple Trump Sony. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's already silly. But what's also silly is that um, either Shield has this program where like uh, the sorry not Shield Hydra made it so the files can be traced by this program for some reason they didn't um, block it off or anything. It's not even well even then. Uh, what, why they have the pro? Why this is even compatible with the program? I have no idea. Um, either that, or they they uh, they wanted to lead them to Zola, um, because if that's true, if they wanted to lead them to Zola, then you could have just taken them out while they were driving, because they somehow managed to just steal a car without getting caught uh, and drive around. After they somehow weren't caught in the Apple Mall. When they're like super famous, they're probably more famous in the movie than they are in real life. Um, they just don't get caught. They don't get seen. Does it, it attracts no attention? Um, and all this on top of each other. Um, if uh, they get caught, uh, twenty million people are dead. So <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. All that needs to happen is uh that dude who says says oh we got similar glasses and be like wait you're captain america and they're fucked <laughs> yep. yeah yeah it's very lucky he knows just the glasses yeah he just so... notices the glasses and not the fucking <laughs> huge ass dude and the fucking gorgeous woman with him who he'd be able to recognize he's like oh shit that's fucking uh black widow so dumb yeah 
So I just want to ask because like I, I wanted to breeze through those points uh, for uh, just just to ask you, is there anything in Tasm Two that's like even nearly as consequential as what I just uh, went through? No, no, no. I will. I will say like so. Tasm then two the case is made. Tasm Two is better. <laughs> yeah, Tasm Two gets, gets to win. <laughs> Wow, we yeah, yeah, there we go. Nice, that sure. <laughs> Doesn't feel like a victory, but sure. Yeah. That was Yeah, I just I, I think the case is pretty clear. I don't see how in any way uh it can be argued that uh Tasm two is worse than Winter Soldier. I, I don't oh, see no, that no. at all. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's like well, not close. Okay, well, in that regard, yeah, Tasm two doesn't do anything dumb as like a Winter Soldier for that aspect, but you know, I mean, like the Winter, like the Winter Soldier in comparison to Tasm Two. I mean, you know, Tasm Two tries to do like more intimate relationship stuff, while the Winter Soldier's like this game-changing, um, high-skill spectacle that changes everything we know about the MCU. But you know, yeah, based it's on your trying video, to do of- more, and it fails at that. Uh, way harder than Tasm Two does. Yeah, it's, it's like it's trying to, to shove a lot of stuff in. Yeah, it's trying to do some stuff that it's trying to do two, a lot of stuff that uh with very high stakes. Well, I mean, in comparison, okay. Well, let's look at this. They have uh, the Winter Soldier, who just so happens to be Bucky Barnes. They wanted to shove that in. They have Zola, who they just brought back because they just you know uh, created this whole supercomputer thing that they didn't create copies for at all. Hey, um, what if confirms they did? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, just counting what uh, if, just counting it as its own thing. They just never made another version. Yeah, just just counting what if. So so they bring back Winter Soldier. Oh, sorry, they bring up Bucky as the Winter Soldier. They bring back Zola. Um, so that's already like you know trying to shove a bunch of stuff in that would please the fans, I guess. Um, they brought back Hydra, like all of Hydra, and they, they retconned it that they were here this whole time in the MCU. And they just forget all the implications of them being there this whole time and what that would change. Uh, such as the fact that they would have access to the Tesseract and they just, you know, didn't do anything with it because yeah. reasons. Which uh, Age the of fact that... actually does a lot better job at uh, working with that. It's like, oh, they had, uh, well, I think it's the, the post credit scene of the Winter Soldier, but Age of Ultron. Yeah, uh, they have the reinforces it more. But pretty much you, you, it's like, oh, they have this technology and they are using it to try to create new weapons. That makes sense from a Hydra's perspective. That's right. So that is actually like, yo, they're actually accounting for it. In Literally instant vaporizing weapons that yeah. they made in First Avenger and they forgot about it. Imagine if Hydra used that in the climax. Yeah, imagine if they had Ooh. those weapons. <laughs> that would. Imagine if Winter Soldier used them. Oh boy. He wouldn't need his his fucking discs because the weapons would charge on themselves. <laughs> and you know the explosions actually from those weapons are way bigger than that disc ever was actually. So, yeah. Mhm. Mhm. So, um, yeah, that's. I think that's all I wanted to get out. Uh, Winter Soldier is is caking shit. It's caking yeah. shit. I. I. I, I you know, I, I got no issue with you guys taking issue as much as, you know, as strongly as you guys uh, feel about my issues with Maze of Spider-Man 2. I mean, that's totally fine. Um, you know, I'm just coming from, like, a more subjective understanding of things with uh, Winter Soldier. Um, I mean, even if I pop it on, I probably still enjoy it as much as Spider-Man 2. I mean, Raimi Spider-Man 2, even though I'm aware, like, South Paul's video also exists for that movie. Um, if that makes any sense. In fairness, Spider-Man 2 isn't as bad as Winter Soldier. <laughs> hmm. Amazing. Isn't it? Uh, oh, yeah, because retroactively, good... Winter Soldier ruins more. Yeah. Yeah. Though the stakes yeah. are and higher. Just, in, it has uh, more technical blades. Two with the, uh, the sun that could potentially destroy all of Earth, but I don't think there's any issue with, like... Hmm. No, well, it's just the simple fact that Winter Soldier has, like, way more tentacle blades. Oh, yeah, definitely. Which is funny, <laughs> yeah. because the tentacle blade is a term we coined because of Spider-Man 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, do, I do have one question, out of curiosity. Sure. What are your thoughts on the calculator in Tasm 2 and Peter picking it up? <laughs> oh, I think it's... You... That's really dumb. Okay. Do you want to know why it actually makes 
makes complete okay. sense. Oh, so, sorry, what is the dumb part about it? Because, you know, maybe Jeb is going to argue against a straw man. What is your issue with it? Well, that the, Jeb is that the bus token coins happen to be in the calculator, um, and it's just like a little follow up. They what happen to be in the calculator, is that Richard Parker hid them in the calculator because it's a thing that he would keep with him at all times. But, like, okay, here's my issue. If he plan all this ahead of time to you know to expose oscorp if like if his lab and his uh, video files about oscorp were discovered by somebody then how would anyone know about the the roosevelt train compartment if the calculators were hidden in the cap i'm sorry the calculators if the coins were hidden in the calculator well first off there was one token that wasn't hidden in the calculator i don't know if you remember that there, there were many tokens dude we're talking arcade piles okay i that does not change anything i said but anyway moving on uh he uh he wants peter to find out he doesn't want just some random person to find out because if someone some random person finds out then uh uh their trust in him wouldn't be as uh they wouldn't trust him as much as peter because peter is you know his son uh and it's also giving peter himself an explanation as to why he has to leave I mean, well, the video is not really directed towards Peter. It's directed to somebody because he refers to Peter in that video as my son Peter, not yeah. This but video he made the video before Peter. he had planned on uh, leaving Peter with uh, Uncle Ben and Aunt May because he didn't know that they were gonna raid his house. And then when he, they do, he grabs Peter, runs to the car, and drops them, drops him at Aunt May and Uncle Ben. So, you, so you're arguing from a perspective of, again of hindsight, which isn't. Uh, Fair. Not really, because who is the who's the video for, anyways? You were trying to expose Oscorp. He had different plans beforehand, and then he had to radically change them. Yeah, he, he had a plan to have should. a video that could potentially clear his name, though probably wouldn't be the case. And then uh, after he realized what's going to happen, it's like, no, I'm I'm just going to uh, make this so only Peter is able to find it, uh, it's, which you know. Uh, it would give more validity uh, in his eyes, which is matters more for him that Peter would not hate uh, him as opposed to like everyone else, because he even says that the most important thing he says in that video that the most important thing in that uh, in his life is his son. So, yeah. Okay, I mean that's fine if it says it, but I mean I don't know. It's just the whole that whole plan. That Richard Parker laid about it just it just feels very convoluted and it's just like there's a, like a lot of missing pieces like couldn't you just leave a fucking note? I, I'm just being I'm just being blunt and just, I'm, no. being, I'm being no he this. couldn't. Or First, you know what, what, why, so where would you leave the note? Well, let's say he even leaves it inside the briefcase and it's laying out every little thing to Peter. Uh, if he does that. He's wasting time, and he's uh, putting his son at risk, which is the exact thing he doesn't want to do. The video is already recorded. He just leaves his briefcase to with uh, Aunt May and Uncle Ben. He's like, keep this safe. Uh, and he leaves because he has to leave. He doesn't want to uh, put uh, people, especially Peter, you know, it was people he loves, in danger. Well, here's the thing. If I'm trying to expose Oscorp, the last people I would want to leave any information to that will prompt like federal agents or Oscorp to That's investigate this will be the people in my family. That's why he hides it so that it's, no, uh, so that first off he doesn't tell what's inside the briefcase. For as far oh, so as everyone he, knows, he, the briefcase is empty, and then he uh, he lays it out in a way that Peter would be able to figure it out, not in a way where uh, anyone would just be able to figure out his entire uh, plan. He doesn't want you to just expose Oscar at that point. He wants Peter to know the truth, uh, which he can't just uh, explain it all right now for Peter because he's too young to understand it. And he has to leave because otherwise, if he spends more time there, he's putting him at more risk uh, because Oscar is going after him. Fine. I mean, whatever. Sure. My, my question was going to be, do you think Peter should notice that the calculator is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Madcap, do you yeah. think... You don't think he should notice? No, I mean, uh, well... I'm not sure, because it's li like... From that scene in that context, it's like the only time he's ever held that calculator. Yes. If, yes. I'm assuming it's on the yes. Well, here's a better argument. But you are right. 
if you actually look up the official weight of those coins, this is what we did, uh, because someone's arguing otherwise. They're actually really light coins, like really light. And I did then a social experiment with my brother, and he couldn't tell the difference between when I put the coins inside, like a similar weight, in a similar thing, and without, so Peter won't be able to. People assume the coins are really dense, and I don't know why, because they're not. I mean, I mean, I help calculators myself too, but I mean, I wouldn't know the difference of weight really. But I mean, eh, that's it. I like, I'd like to be really concise and make sure um, all my details are like there's no room for error. No, I mean, I I get what you're saying. I mean, so yeah. Anyway. That was the debate. Uh, this should come out on you come soon ish. Not sure when yet. Uh, just want to ask everyone here if you're okay with making this public. No, I am not okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Madcap, uh, you okay with this uh, going out on the come channel? I mean, that's totally fine. I mean, I I would feel I was gonna come out pretty strongly uh, for this debate, but I didn't know we were gonna go on this long. Cause I will let you know, I'm not a I'm not of long man status yet. I mean, <laughs> I'm already freaking hungry. I need, I need to grab some food pretty soon. Oh, but, yeah, Sam, um, I'm going to have dinner as soon as uh, we're done here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, but, we're you know, really perhaps if, um, I'm long. sorry. Go ahead, dude. No, yeah, we're just, we're not really used to going as long as well. The, uh, before we did the uh, the one year anniversary stream that was 12 hours, I, I think the longest one we did was six, and we were dead by the end. We were fucking exhausted. So it's like, it's it's hard to go for that long. So I don't really fault you for that. It's fine. No, no, it's fine. Um, thank you. Uh, that's fine, dude. Um, but uh, this was um, this was still a good, like, little venture to be a part of your podcast. And mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I've, I, I will let you know this as well. I've <laughs> I come off from a long week of, like, working two jobs. So... The uh, I'm I'm a bit exhausted still, so I didn't really make time to uh, articulate my notes on arguing between Winter Soldier and The Amazing Spider-Man Two. But hopefully in the future, if if you guys are open, I'm willing to like reprise our talks on Amazing Spider-Man Two at some point because uh, I do plan to um, write uh, videos on uh, both movies, especially The Amazing Spider-Man. Because I rewatched both movies um, a week before we went on here, and oh god, um, I think that film's pretty bad. But you know, uh, whenever you guys are open to the future, I'd be more than happy to <clears throat> um, join you guys for another podcast stream. Sure, I'm very interested. Yeah, when, if you ever make your videos, we're surely check them out. Yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because right now I gotta get like a Man of Steel video out that I have withheld for quite a while. Um, criticizing it, I hope. Yeah, criticizing, not praising. <laughs> that movie's terrible. Yes, um, one of the worst, uh, one of the worst movies I've ever seen, especially in the theater. Um, but yeah, um, Disney fandom had passed, and I was aiming to get that video out for Disney. F uh, Disney, oh my god, damn it, DC fandom, god damn it, <laughs> long day. Uh, DC fandom had already passed, and I was aiming to release that video uh, for for that time, but um, I got caught up in other things. So hopefully that will um, be ready to be out by by the end of uh, October. All right. But yeah, if you guys are curious to, um, I don't really have much content on my channel, but there's a particular video involving a very notorious character off a animated show called Invincible. Have you guys seen? I have not. I've only seen the first episode uh, of Invincible. I do plan on okay. checking it out soon, yeah. Uh, what about you, Jeb? Have you seen Invincible? Same as Marcus. Only one episode. SK seen it. Alright. Well, if you guys uh, do check out the whole, sh the whole show so far with that first season, um, I got a video on Amber. Sure, many people have done better videos, but um, I got one uh, available on my channel, but you guys are more than welcome to check it out. All right. Yeah, I'll keep it in mind when I'm done with the show, yeah.
so yeah uh madcap's channel will be in the description if you guys want to check out his stuff um and yeah i think you know sk as well but nobody likes sk so it doesn't matter so anyway thanks everyone for watching this was uh the amazing spider-man chew versus winter soldier debate kill yourself chew sk uh and yeah goodbye